And ahead is just before us now. Both teams in the locker room ready to come on the field. They played the national anthem at South Bend at Notre Dame Stadium. A capacity crowd late arriving. Everybody is almost in their seats. Almost the entire Notre Dame student body on the field ready to greet the team as they come on the field. Notre Dame will be on the field momentarily. It's winter weather in South Bend, Indiana. In front of us over Lake Michigan, looking out toward the east, the lake effect clouds from a northwest breeze that is fairly strong. Over the stadium and over the South Bend campus of Notre Dame, clear skies, just puffs of white clouds sun beaming down on the field temperature rating 36 degrees at game time high expected to move to about 40 degrees bear bryant who on the list of all-time coaches is number three in wins with over 260 behind only amos alonzo stag and pop warner came out here yesterday afternoon with his team they worked out on the field he was wondering about the footing he asked one of the notre dame managers student managers will the cleats hold in this field South Bend had some snow on Wednesday. Folks in South Bend woke up Wednesday morning to a Christmas-like atmosphere. Some of the snow has melted off. There's still snow in the area. The temperatures are winter-like and crisp. Coming out of the chute now, the Alabama Crimson Tide coming onto the field. White jerseys, crimson helmet, white pants, and crimson piping down the sides of those pants. Notre Dame as yet has not made an appearance. We'll give the starting lineups now the Alabama defense. At right cornerback, Mike Tucker, 5'11", 170 pounds from Anniston, Alabama. He is a junior. Murray Leck, strong safety. Sophomore, Birmingham, 5'11", 186. Mike Kramer, 6 feet tall, 186. Junior, Mobile, Alabama. The left cornerback, Bill Allman, a sprinter, 6'2", 180 from Birmingham, a sophomore. At linebacker, Ricky Gilliland, 6'1", 220 from Birmingham, a sophomore. Middle guard, Gus White, he's a good one, 5'10", 256 pounds from Dothan, Alabama. He's a senior. And up the other linebacker spot will be Dewey Mitchell, 6'2", 226 from Tampa, Florida. He is a junior. Taking a look at that, Alabama defensive front four. At right defensive end, it'll be Paul Harris, 6'3", 216, a senior from Mobile, Alabama. Right tackle, Charles Hanna from a great, famous football family. 6'6", 244 pounds, Albertville. He is a senior. Left tackle, Bob Baumhauer, 6'4", 254. All-American preseason pick. 6'4", 254, Tuscaloosa, a senior. Notre Dame coming on. Notre Dame players moving through. The student body of Notre Dame standing under the goalpost to our left. At left end, it'll be Bruce Hodges, 6'3", 217 pounds, a junior from Sarasota, Florida. On offense for Notre Dame as the Fighting Irish come on the field with the gold helmets, the blue home jerseys, white numerals, gold pants, blue socks, led by defensive captain Willie Fry. On offense for Notre Dame, left tackle will be Harry Wipkenberg, back in action, 6'2", 261, junior, Cincinnati, Ohio. Left guard, Mike Carney will not play this afternoon. He will be replaced on defense by Elton Moore on offense. Moore coming at 6'1", 240 from Portland, Oregon. Ted Horansky of Cleveland, Ohio will also see action at that position. As a matter of fact, he might start. Dave Huffman will be at center, 6'5", 241. He'll have the mammoth assignment of handling a tough middle guard in Gus White. He is from Dallas, Texas, a sophomore right guard, Ernie Hughes, 6'3", 257 from Boise, Idaho, a junior. Right tackle, Steve McDaniel, 6'6", 274 from Seattle, a junior. At halfback, it'll be Al Hunter, 5'11", 195 from Greenville, North Carolina, a junior. And starting at fullback will be Vegas Ferguson, a 9'4 sprinter, 6'1", 194, a freshman from Richmond, Indiana. The quarterback, Rick Slager, 5'11", 188, a senior from Columbus, Ohio. At wide receiver, we expect to see Dan Kelleher, 5'11", 188 from Ellensburg, Washington, a senior and a tight end. Ken McAfee, 6'4", 253, a junior from Brockton, Massachusetts. So there it is. Those are the starting lineups as we get ready for another one. Alabama has come on strong this season after losing a couple in the beginning of the year. The law, one of the losses being to Georgia, top team in the Southeastern Conference. Notre Dame last week losing to Georgia Tech are going to try to get back to their usual winning ways. The teams uh, now are on their respective sides of the field. Alabama is in white with those crimson helmets. Notre Dame with the blue home jerseys, the white numerals, the gold helmets, and the gold pants down below us in front of coach Dan Devine. Notre Dame coming into this game was uh, victimized last week by Georgia Tech for over 360 yards on the ground and coming into that 
Georgia Tech game, Notre Dame had averaged giving up only 98 yards per game to its opponents. So the Irish will see a lot of running against this Alabama team this afternoon. But Alabama can throw the ball, particularly when Jeff Rutledge is in the game. He's completed 56% of his passes. The other quarterback on Alabama, Jack O'Rear, is supposed to be a superb runner, having run for over 560 yards so far this season. Alabama can hurt you with both the run and the pass. A particularly skilled receiver is Ozzie Newsom, who will play tight end. Bear Bryant says he wouldn't trade Ozzie Newsom for any receiver in the country today. Notre Dame, of course, can go through both the air and on the ground. Dan Devine told me in inserting Vegas Ferguson into the fullback position, along with Al Hunter, he wants to get a little more quickness in his backfield. He was speaking mildly. Hunter is a 9-3 sprinter, and Vegas Ferguson is a 9-4 sprinter. So that gives Notre Dame great breakaway speed in its backfield. Notre Dame's first task, though, will be to stop that wishbone that Alabama will throw at it this afternoon. As you know, last week Notre Dame was victimized by the wishbone as the rambling wrecks of Georgia Tech went for over 360 yards. Right now, we're getting all set for the kickoff. Chicagoland with solid cars. The Chicagoland Solid Men of Old in 1941 introduced a new solid car for the luxury car buyer, the Old 98. Today, the Chicagoland Solid Men of Old proudly invites you to test drive the latest in this particular series of solid cars, solid service, and solid deals. The 1977 Old 98. Solid. To fully appreciate the solid new 98, you ought to get behind the wheel and drive one. See your Chicagoland solid men of old this week, and you can do just that. Statistically looking at these two teams, average game per game, rushing Alabama has gone for over 266 yards, and they might even use three sets of offensive backs. The one to look for is Johnny Davis as a 5.7-yard average. Tony Nathan, another big runner for Alabama, 5.3-yard average. They've allowed their opponents only 147 yards a game. Yards passing, Alabama's thrown for 87 yards per game. Their opponents have only gone for 83. Notre Dame has run for 208 yards per game. Notre Dame's opponents have only managed to go for 131 per game. Meanwhile, Notre Dame, as far as passing is concerned, has thrown the ball for 153 yards per game and have allowed their opponents only 130 yards per game. Statistics can be misleading. If Alabama has to pass, they can pass and pass very effectively. So can Notre Dame. Notre Dame has excellent receivers. And a sprinter out wide, Dan Kelleher, and of course the big tight end, Ken McAfee, All-American. Lazy Boy Chair Company will award a famous Lazy Boy Chair to the respective schools of the names of today's outstanding offensive and defensive players. Our judges are Cooper Rallo, the sports editor of the Chicago Tribune, Mike McKenzie of the Tuscaloosa News, Joe Doyle of the South Bend Tribune. We will announce the winners before the conclusion of today's game. Big game for Alabama. Alabama looking toward the Bulls. Notre Dame trying to get back on its winning ways. And now Don Crickey, they're ready for the toss of the coin at the center of the field. They are indeed. As Notre Dame comes into this game, this could be a million-dollar football game. A million dollars because the winner of this game is expected to go on to the Cotton Bowl. A bowl game that pays a million dollars to both of its participants. Notre Dame has to win to go on. Now the Fighting Irish at midfield in their blue and gold uniforms around head coach Dan Devine. The white-clad crimson tide of Alabama goes back around Bear Bryant. And we are set to go on what has turned out to be an excellent day for football in South Bend. Ten inches of snow just over a week ago. There's no trace of it now. The temperature up around 40 degrees. It is a brilliant sunshiny day. The field is fast and dry. It is a perfect day. Bear Bryant this morning said, I just hope it doesn't snow. I don't think I've got five guys that have ever seen snow, let alone play in it. Alabama very seldom comes out of the South to play football. It's been some years since they have. Alabama and Notre Dame meeting for the first time in regular season play, and of course their last meeting was in the Orange Bowl, the last game for Eric Parsig and his head coach, won by the Fighting Hours 13 to 11. And for a second time in two years at that point, Notre Dame had denied Alabama a national championship. Buck 
Rocky Berry is the man who will kick off for Alabama. Notre Dame is deploying into receiving formation to our left, and we pause briefly for station identification. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. This is WGN Radio, Chicago. Going back deep for Notre Dame are Steve Schmitz and Al Hunter. How well Alabama remembers Al Hunter as a freshman. He broke a 93-yard kickoff for a touchdown. Ultimately, that decided the 1973 Sugar Bowl and won Notre Dame a national championship over Alabama. Barry has the ball lined up. He's moving into it now, and the game is underway. It's a high kick, not too deep. Alphonse Hunter will take the ball at the 10. Straight ahead, 15. Cuts to the right, back over across the 20, out to the 23-yard line. And there, Notre Dame will go on offense, first and 10. Pete Cavan came down to make the tackle for Alabama. Notre Dame's offense goes out on the field. Rick Slager is the quarterback. Notre Dame is starting a freshman at one of the running backs today, a freshman fullback, Vegas Ferguson, from Richmond, Indiana. A 9-4 splitter, a 200-pounder, great breakaway threat. In the backfield with Vegas Ferguson and Rick Slager is Al Hunter, Notre Dame's leading rusher, a man who is 237 yards away from becoming the all-time leading rusher in a single season for Notre Dame. Rick Slager is at quarterback. Now, here's the snap. Halfback, Al Hunter gets the first handoff of the game, goes across the 25 on a straight-ahead carry, and hits out to the 26-yard line. He was knocked down by Alabama's middle guard, Gus White. Pat? Gus White is a very, very tough football player. What a build. 5'11", 256 pounds. And Dave Huffman of Notre Dame is going to have quite an assignment handling this man who will be nose-on-nose nose with him. Alabama will be shifting around, however, covering the gaps in their defensive line. They'll use many defensive sets. It is second and a long seven for Notre Dame. Now they go into a double wing set. Lone setback is Vegas Ferguson ball at the 26-yard line. Here is Rick Slager rolling out. He throws back if he has it for a first down for Notre Dame. As he dives out across the 40. And along the Notre Dame sideline in front of the bench, he gets the ball up close to the 44-yard line. Slager on a quick rollout to his right. And his tight end, McAfee, with a quick inside release, took the throw over the middle and cut to the outside. He was knocked out of bounds by Murray Leg. But it is a first down for Notre Dame, a gain of 18 yards on the play. And the 24th catch of the year for Big McAfee, the All-American tight end of Notre Dame. Notre Dame now going with two wide receivers set to the left as Al Hunter moves out as a wing back there, a double wing formation again. Vegas Ferguson alone set back. Slager throws in the run. He's got his man, Al Hunter. He's inside the Alabama 45-yard line. It's a 13-yard gain. And another Notre Dame first down as Mike Tucker, the right cornerback, made the hit. Notre Dame is getting a quick inside release. That time from a wing back. And Slager on the rollout is right on the numbers with the throw. It's the second consecutive first down for Notre Dame. And the importance of that kind of play is that it's going to put a strain on the Alabama linebackers. They've got to watch for that pass now. So the fighting Irish are on the move in the first quarter. There's no score here at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame and Alabama. Slager takes the snap. Here is the first back through Vegas. Ferguson crashes inside the 40-yard line of Alabama. He gained five yards in a straight-ahead run. As his sophomore setter, Dave Huffman, blew out the Alabama middle guard, Gus White, who made the tackle but six yards downfield. It'll be second and actually five yards to go for the first down for Notre Dame, the ball of the 39-yard line of Alabama. Slager called an audible on that play because Gus White moved himself out of position right before the snap of the center, and Notre Dame picked it up. Doman comes wide to the right now for Notre Dame. Kelleher is flanked to the left. Two sets back, Vegas, Ferguson, and Al Hunter. Slager straight drop back, has time. Puts it up, back if he's open. He has the ball at the 15-yard line. He's knocked out of the 13. Slager putting it right on the numbers as McAfee is ripping open the Alabama secondary. An 18-yard gain on his first reception. That was for 25 yards. Fly pattern right down the middle, right in front of the safety men behind the linebackers. McAfee took it right on the numbers was Slager with the flip. Slager completing, a, Slager completing about 50% of his passes this year. This Notre Dame team was embarrassed last week, losing to Georgia Tech. Now Notre Dame is moving the ball against Alabama. Here's a handoff first back through a good hit by Alabama. A short gain as Vegas Ferguson got the handoff and big Bob Baumhauer, right from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. 6'4", 254, made the hit. Baumhauer, a preseason All-American, All-Southeast Conference football player. This team is really strong at tackle. Charlie Hanna, the other tackle, of course, the son of Herb Hanna. WGN Radio, Chicago. Player, and his brother, big star with the New England Patriots. It is now second down and eight for Notre Dame. And the ball to the 13-yard line of Alabama. There's no score in the first quarter. Here's Slager rolling out to his right. A big pursuit. He puts the ball up. It is tipped and almost intercepted by Alabama. Baumhauer makes the big play for the Crimson Tide. As the rush was put on by outside linebacker Dewey Mitchell and Baumhauer slapped down the pass by Slager, 
Now it's going to be third and eight for Notre Dame. Mitchell's pursuit on that play was uh, the key to that because the quarterback Slager had to get it away from before he had an opportunity really to get his pass receiver released into the secondary of Alabama. Slager has completed three of four now for 55 yards. McAfee with two receptions for 43. It is third and eight for Notre Dame at the Alabama 13-yard line. Irish moving left to right, open field to the right side. Here's a long count of blitz is coming. Slager rolls out. He puts it up. It is incomplete inside the five-yard line along the near sideline. Kelleher diving for the ball on an out pattern. It was thrown too far away from him to get it. And so the Notre Dame field goal unit comes out on fourth and eight. Again, Notre Dame was in a position where Alabama knew they were going to pass, and Alabama came with a blitz again, and Dewey Mitchell was the man who put on the key pressure as he did in the preceding play. And again, a big play by Mitchell forces Slager to throw too soon. Notre Dame with a try for the field goal from the Slager will hold at the 19-yard line. David Reed has been to the ball. Now he hits it high into the wind. It is plenty long, but is it good? It is no good. It is wide to the left, so Alabama does not give up points after Notre Dame takes the opening drive all the way down to the Alabama 13-yard line. Reed had plenty of distance, but could not get this through the uprights. It is wide to the left, and so Alabama takes over the football on the touchback. The Crimson Tide will have the ball first and 10 at their 20-yard line. We have 12 minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the first quarter here at Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. And no score on the board as Alabama gets the ball for the first time. Reeve is now 50% of his tries for field goals. Alabama breaks the huddle. The quarterback for them is number 11, Rutledge. Wide to the right now goes Ozzie Newsom. The man Bear Bryant is so high on. Here is the pitch back. No, and Rutledge is going to keep it himself. Turns the corner, crosses the 25, crosses the 30. He's all the way out to the 40-yard line of Alabama. A 20-yard gain as Jim Brown of the strong safety ran him out of bounds. So on the first play from scrimmage, Alabama's quarterback Jeff Rutledge rolls it out and takes it down the far sideline for 20 yards and a first down. Well, they had everybody covered on that play. The fullback was popped at the line of scrimmage. The halfback, who was supposed to be the pitch man, was knocked down on about the 15-yard line by Resnick. The only guy that wasn't stopped was the fellow with the ball, and that was Rutledge, who was supposed to be the passer. Thad Flanagan now goes wide to the right. Alabama in all white uniforms with the crimson helmets and crimson numerals. Here is the fake. The handoff goes. Running with the ball is the fullback. Right ahead goes Pete Cavan, and he is knocked down on the play by Mike Calhoun of Notre Dame. A short gain on the play, only a yard. It'll be second down and nine for Alabama. The ball is advanced just across the Alabama 41-yard line. Across the defensive front of Notre Dame, Ross Browner and Willie Fry are the ends. Mike Calhoun and Ken Dyke are the tackles. Doug Becker, Bob Golick, and Steve Heimquart are back the line. Bergmeier and Bradley are at the corners. Rustic and Browner are the safeties. Alabama's now set in the wishbone offense. The up back, the full back gets the hand up, and he's quickly knocked down to the 43-yard line. Johnny Davis, the best running back in Alabama, 6'1", 228, a junior, averaging 5.7 yards a carry, was knocked down on the play. And that'll bring up third down and seven for Alabama. Heimquetter got him for Notre Dame. Culliver is also in the backfield. He's playing in one of the halfback spots along with Cabin. And the quarterback is Jeff Rutledge, who has a 56% completion average on his forward passes. Third down, seven to go coming up, 11.22 to go in the first quarter. There is no score on the board here at Notre Dame Stadium. Alabama has the football. Notre Dame drove downfield first time they got it, but missed a field goal. It is now third and seven. Here is a handoff right up the middle, running with the ball as the fullback. Johnny Davis, but he did not get there. Bob Golick, Notre Dame's middle linebacker, hit him, knocked him down to the 49-yard line, and Alabama will have to punt the ball. The Crimson Tide working with a strong wind at their back here in the first quarter. They'll be punting the ball right to left as we're located. So Notre Dame holds after Alabama gets the big gainer on their first play from scrimmage, and now dropping back deep for Notre Dame is Bergmeier. Here is the punt. It is not too deep. It'll hit at the out-of-bounds inside the Notre Dame 30-yard line. Let's see where they mark the ball. They're going to put it right at the Notre Dame 30. Now the score, Notre Dame nothing, and Alabama nothing. There's a timeout on the field, and this for Regency Electronics. You can watch television or read the papers and get the news that's happened. Or you can listen to this. We've cited three suspects inside the bank. It's a Regency Monitor Radio. It scans public service channels like fire and police. You get the news as it happens, before it hits the news tank. Regency. We're worth listening to. For CDs, monitor scanners, marines, business. This is Don Crickey with Pat Sheridan, Bob Freshly, Buck Jersey, our entire mutual broadcasting system crew back at South Bend. Notre Dame will have the ball first and 10 at their 30. 
Right now, there's a timeout on the field with a score in Notre Dame. Nothing in Alabama, nothing. For the best protection from the rain or cold, get a genie automatic. Getting out of your car means stepping into a storm. You need a Genie Garage Door Opener. Call Hilby and Lumber Company at 678-4950. That's 678-4950. Turns the corner on the outside, spins out across the 30, now to the 34-yard line. A couple of hard hits put on by Bama. Mike Tucker, the right cornerback, put the hit on as did Charlie Hanna. Al Hunter spinning off. He got four yards on the carry. It'll be second down and six for Notre Dame. A quick reacting Alabama defense came over and veered in the direction of the play and made the stop. Thus, the pulling guard, Ernie Hughes, just didn't have a chance to clear the hole. Now wide to the right for Notre Dame is Tom Doman. Wide to the left is Dan Kelleher. Slager going with a long count on second down and six from the Notre Dame 34-yard line. Here's a handoff. Vegas Ferguson runs up the middle, puts his head down, runs right into Baumhauer, knocks him back. Vegas Ferguson runs into the 255-pound offensive tackle, Bob Baumhauer. Drove him back, and it'll be third down and three coming up for Notre Dame at the Irish 37-yard line. The Notre Dame coaching staff uh, now sends in a substitute coming into the game. It's Robin Weber coming in at tight end. Mutual, the world's number one sports network, brings you... Sunday afternoon NFL football. Miami and Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. Third and three for Notre Dame. Big play for the Irish now and for the Alabama defense. Here is Slager handing off. Running with the ball is Hunter. He has the first down. He's in open field. Turns the corner. Crosses the 50. Hale Hunter going down the far sideline. One man has the line and they get him inside the 30. A brilliant run by Alphonse Hunter of Notre Dame. Cutting off tackle. He broke to the outside. Got the first down. Put a deep fake on. Eluded one tackler. Cut to the far sideline. And sprinted ahead 37 yards for a Notre Dame first down. I'd like to welcome these stations to our mutual network for this great football game. KGBS of Los Angeles, WRIT up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. KVWO, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hope you're enjoying it. It is now first down and 10 for Notre Dame as they have it all. The 26-yard line of Alabama with no score in the first quarter. Wide receiver sets to the right, that's Kelleher. Slager throws down the run, the ball is caught by Hunter. He dives over one tackler and goes down to the 18-yard line. Al Hunter caught the ball, swinging out of the backfield. Bill Allman came up. Hunter jumped over him, then was tripped up in the air. He gets the ball down to the 18, though, and it'll be second and two. Had not Allman made a diving last-minute try on the 18-yard line of the near hash mark to stop the receiver, Hunter, Hunter might have gone all the way with his speed into the end zone because he had a gap right along the hash mark to the end zone, but Allman made the stop around the ankles. Notre Dame has moved the ball quickly and rather easily against Alabama in his first two possessions, but still no points on the board. Here is Slager with the ball, second and two for Notre Dame, Alabama, 18-yard line. Slager, hands off. Wide to the left goes Al Hunter, cuts back. He's inside the 15 and down to the 12. It's a first down for the Fighting Irish. Notre Dame getting some brilliant blocking from the left side. Harry Wetkenberg, the big left tackle from Cincinnati. The left guard, Elton Moore, blowing out their counterparts from Alabama, opening the big, big hole along with Huffman, the center, who's an overmatch right now for the Alabama middle guard, Gus White. Huffman is winning that key matchup right now, and Notre Dame is moving the ball. Pulling guard Ernie Hughes did a great job on that too, Don. As Notre Dame is getting those initial blocks, Alabama plays well off the ball. They use a spread five formation. Now linebackers come up like defensive end. Here's the throw. McAfee has the ball. He's down to the three. McAfee catches the ball, his third reception, and he is hit by Tucker and is knocked down at the three-yard line. And so, it will be second down and two for Notre Dame for a first down, second down, and actually four is where they're spotting the ball at the four-yard line, second and four for a touchdown. And Tucker hit him like a dynamite blast and just bounced off at the five-yard line, and McAfee went on to the four-yard line and then fell down. What a collision. Notre Dame is mounting a challenge now. McAfee with three receptions for 51 yards. The Irish moving left to right. They have open field to the right. Two tight ends in the game. Slager hands off. Orsini has the ball. Fumbles in the end zone, and Alabama has it. Orsini fumbles in the end zone. Mike Tucker recovers for a touchback, and Notre Dame's drive is stopped. Charlie Hanna puts the shot on Orsini, and McAfee of Notre Dame is limping off the field and holding his right knee. So 
Charlie Hanna comes up with a big play for Alabama, just like Dewey Mitchell came up with two big plays on the other Notre Dame drive. Twice now, Notre Dame has driven into Alabama territory and been stopped by the Crimson Tide. On this last one, the Irish came oh so close in the first quarter with 7.31 to go. There is still no score. Notre Dame player injured. It looks like a leg injury. Robin Weber is down. Uh, it looks like Robin Weber on about the 14-yard line. Trainer has come out to look at him. We have a pause in action. With the score, nothing to nothing. There's a timeout on the field. And now, this for Buick Automobiles. Buy a Buick Opel any time, and you get a sensational little car. One that's comfortable, fun to drive, built by Isuzu, and equipped with things like a four-cylinder overhead cam hemi engine, a short-throw four-speed manual transmission, plus reclining bucket seats, tinted glass, and rack and pinion steering. But for those of you who buy one between now and October 31st, there's a special offer that goes with it. Buick will reimburse you for 200 gallons of gasoline. And with 200 gallons of gas in a new Opel, you can do a lot of driving. Of course, your mileage may vary, but at the estimated EPA city mileage alone of 23 miles per gallon, that's 4,600 miles. And on the highway, Opel's EPA estimate is 36 miles per gallon. Not bad, hmm? The Buick Opel Gas Offer. See your Buick Opel dealer soon for details and make your best deal. You'll get a great little car that gives you what you pay for. And 200 gallons of gas from Buick. In California, EPA estimates are lower. Notre Dame has amassed 131 yards in two drives that have failed. Notre Dame failing to put up points after moving the ball with Weddle Devise against Alabama. That was a fumble by Orsini, who almost never fumbles. Here's a throw by Rutledge, and catching the ball is Thad Flanagan at the 37-yard line along the near sideline. It goes to the completion. Notre Dame coaches protesting, and he caught the ball out of bounds. But Flanagan had it inbound, says the official. And Bama, again on first down, gets the big gainer. We talk about a lot of the guys on the Notre Dame team, like Dan Kelleher, who stick around and keep fighting for a job. Well, Tad Flanagan is that kind of player on Alabama. Defensive back, now on offense, he just kept trying and finally got a regular position. And now it is first and ten for Bama at their 36-yard line. Here is Rutledge rolling up. Pitches back to Calvin Culliver. Ross Brown is running him down. And Ross Browner gets him at the 40-yard line. A big play by Ross Browner. Culliver is a 9-7 sprinter, and Ross Browner ran him down. As he tried to turn the corner on, on Browner, and there's a gain on the play out to the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and six. Big Calvin Culliver has never, in an Alabama uniform, run for an average of less than five yards. He's a sprinter, as Don told you. Also, tremendous power. Johnny Davis is also a sprinter. He's at the fullback spot. Davis is the upback. He has never been thrown for a loss when he carried the ball in his career at Alabama. He gets the football. He is hit as he drives across the 42, the 42, or three. It'll bring up third down and about four now for Alabama. A hard hit put out in the middle by Doug Becker and Mike Calhoun of Notre Dame. Third and four for Bama at the Crimson Tide's 43-yard line. That was just straight power right up the middle following the churning legs of the center, Terry Jones, as he tried to get some yardage. He just put his head down and followed his center right into the middle of the Notre Dame defense, and the Notre Dame defense converged on him, so we've got a third down, four yards to go. Big call here for Bear Bryant. Big call. Third down and four for Alabama. The tie with Rutledge at quarterback. Sets up now in a half wishbone. One man is out of the wing back. Rutledge carries, dives. Did he get ahead for the first down? Notre Dame throws him down at the 46 or 7. He had to get out across the 46. He was diving. He was squirming, trying to fight for what he needed. Ken Dyke was holding on for Notre Dame. They're going to spot the ball down as Notre Dame on piles. They're going to bring the yard markers out. That, well, the big man from Arkansas who used to wrestle bears when he was about 15 years of age at various carnivals in that area has been known to gamble. Let's see what happens after the measurement. They're just about to ready to stretch the chains at about a foot shy, maybe even less than a foot. Let's make it about six inches. And they're going to move it in. Will Bear Bryant gamble now? He's been known to do it before. This is an important game for Alabama. 5.57 to go. First quarter, nothing to nothing score. Alabama huddling on the 35-yard line in their own territory. Ball on the 46-yard line. Alabama moving south to north. They're out of the huddle. They're going to try. Alabama now. Watch Baker. He is the man to watch 38. The up back in the eye in the wishbone formation. Never has been thrown for a loss. Fourth and inches for Alabama at the Bama, 46, no score. Now they shift into a punt formation. Rutledge drops back. They might hike it to an up back, though, an unusual formation for Bama. Notre Dame is protesting delay a game. They're waiting for Notre Dame to jump offside. The Irish aren't going to do it. 
Alabama was waiting for Notre Dame to jump offside and try to get the first down on a penalty, but Notre Dame defensive men congratulate each other. They held their place. And now, Alabama will be penalized five yards for delay of game. It was a tactical move by Alabama. They intended to take the delay of game, but they thought Notre Dame would jump offside before that. And so now Alabama will punch the ball to Notre Dame. Still done, a very good strategic move by Bear Bryant. He played poker, Notre Dame won that hand, but there's still no score on the board as Notre Dame has had two possessions, two excellent drives, but no points. Here is the punt almost blocked. Downfield is Bergmeyer for Notre Dame. He feels it on the run, turns the corner. He's knocked down to the 20. No, he's still on his feet. He crosses the 30 and gets out to the 33-yard line. John Crow, the son of the great from the NFL, John David Crow, is down to make the play for Bama. Notre Dame will go first and 10 from their 33. And John Crow, incidentally, had uh, the distinction of making all state in two different states in high school. First as a junior, he was all state in Alabama, and then he moved to the Cleveland area and was all state there. Notre Dame out of the huddle. So Notre Dame, with moving the ball, last time they had a fumble in the Alabama end zone and lost possession there in a touchback. Here is Notre Dame Slager dropping to throw. Look, a quick out in the far flat. He overthrows his intended receiver, Tom Doman, to the 37-yard line in front of the Notre Dame bench. Doman was turning out. It was a timing pad, and it was misthrown. And good coverage by Alabama. Doman was well covered by the Alabama defense, so Notre Dame has a second down, 10 yards to go coming up. Both times Notre Dame's offense has had the ball, they have driven. And they have moved well until they've gotten close into Alabama territory. Then Alabama's defense has stiffened. The big hit stopped the Notre Dame drive and it looked like the Irish were going in for a touchdown. An overshift in the Alabama line. Now they go to a four-man front of Schlager, rolls up, puts the ball up on the line. He's got his man. Doman has the ball up to 40. And he loses his footing there. It'll bring up a third down and three. Doman coming back at the ball, caught it, slipped to the ground at the Notre Dame 40. A gain of seven. It'll be second, third down and three. Doman, of course, is on the receiving end of passes now for Notre Dame as a high school football player in the Chicago area for Willowbrook High School. He was just an absolutely sensational running back. Slager has completed six of nine passes for 78 yards. Slager's been throwing very well on the run. McAfee's has been his big receiver. McAfee is deployed to the left. Dillman is out to the left as a wing back there. Here is a handoff. Vegas Ferguson has the football. He is ridden down, but he drives outside the 40-yard line, out close to the 43, where he had to go for the first down. They're going to spot the ball down, and it would appear it might be just short of a first down, although it might be close enough to measure. Paul Harris, the right end, made the stop for Alabama. He got Vegas Ferguson around the neck, and now there's a timeout with the score. Notre Dame nothing and Alabama nothing. For Ram Supply Company, 2501 North Central Avenue, Chicago, our wholesalers are crane valves and stock and pipe fittings for industry. For Ram Supply Company also stocks steel pipes manufactured by Jones & Laughlin, Youngstown Sheet & Tube, Republic Steel Corporation, and United States Steel Corporation. For Ram Supply Company accepts orders for carload of steel pipes to be shipped direct from one of the steel mills or less than carload for shipment from stock. Please call Bob Collins or Ed Moran at 622-8300 when you have a need for pipe valves or fittings. Now, back to the action. Notre Dame is just short of the first down and just shy of the Notre Dame 43. And so Joe Rustic, one of the premier putters in the game, comes on the field for Notre Dame. Ozzie Newsom, a big, rangy, wide receiver, drops back to return the punt. Great all-around athlete. He can break it. Rustic can hit the ball from where he's standing, his 28-yard line all the way into the end zone, and he's kicking into a win. Hits that direct spiral that pierces the win. Now, down over the ball. Howard Meyer to snap it to Joe Restick. Alabama has an excellent team for blocking punts. They've got an expert at that. Here's a good snap. Restick hits the ball end over end. Newsom fields it at his 21. Turns to the outside, and Notre Dame corners him and knocks him down hard. A 37-yard punt. Restick didn't get all of that one. And Alabama will have the ball first and 10 at the Tide's 24-yard line. Worse yet for the Notre Dame specialty team, the punt was a low-driving one. However, the coverage was very, very good. Newsom, who averages about 10.4 yards per return on his punts, did not get anywhere near that. The ball will be on the 23-yard line on the near hash mark. So Notre Dame has uh, Bama pretty well shoved back into its own territory. Alabama against Notre Dame from South Bend to Indiana. Sunshine beaming down on the field, temperature reading 36 degrees. The Alabama team was concerned about the effect of the cold weather upon them coming into this game. Mutual, for the fifth straight year, Mutual brings you Monday Night Football with Lindsey Nelson and Tony Roberts. Over most of these Mutual stations on Monday night, you can hear Buffalo against Dallas. Dallas, a superb-looking football team. And, of course, O.J. Simpson will be back after being thrown out of that game last week. O.J. decided to turn prize fighter when he got mad at a lineman. 
It'll be Roger Staubach and that Dallas Cowboy bunch, and they really throw that football. Should be an interesting game on Mutual. That'll be on Monday night. I'd like to welcome these stations to our Mutual Radio Network. Notre Dame football against Alabama. WKRI, Providence, Rhode Island. WBMT, Burlington, Vermont. WHAP, Hopewell, Virginia. They're out of the huddle now. Alabama has the ball. There is no score on the board in the first quarter, 419 to play in it. First and 10 for Alabama at the tied 23-yard line. Rutledge rolls out to his right. Browner is blocked, and Rutledge runs, crosses the 25 and the 30. And then the big hit is put on Rutledge as he gets ahead for a first down by Ross Browner, who came from off the play to hit him from behind. Browner with that great speed, he's 6'4", 255 pounds. But Rutledge gets 12 yards and a first down for Alabama. As you pointed out, that play has gained for Alabama. In their first drive, Alabama had a very big game with Rutledge moving around that very same end, moving around his right side, Notre Dame's left. Notre Dame is king on the running backs, and Rutledge has now carried three times for 35 yards. First and 10 for Alabama at their 35. Here is the handoff. Up the middle goes Davis, the fullback, knocked down at the 39. He is thrown back by the 240-pound middle linebacker of Notre Dame, Bob Golick. Also on the stop for the Fighting Irish was Ken Dyke. It'll be second down and seven. Mike Calhoun had him around the waist on the 35-yard line. He just bounced off Mike Calhoun and moved on for a couple more yards. That wasn't a sloppy tackle. It was more good running by the Alabama back. Now Alabama breaks the huddle. Davis is the up back and the wishbone set wide receivers to either side. Nathan is now in the game as one of the running backs. Here is a fake. Rutledge rolling out to his right. Pitches back. With the ball is Tony Nathan, and he is knocked out of the 41-yard line. Excellent defense by Notre Dame. Nathan looked like he had run, room to go, and then Ross Browner fended off the block and came over and hit him on the far side of the field. And that will bring up third down and four for Alabama at the Crimson Tide 41-yard line. It looked like Pete Cabin had Browner wiped out on the left side of the Notre Dame line. He laid a beautiful block into Browner, but Browner got off the block and with his good quickness and good speed pursued to make that tackle. Big play by Browner. Lots of second effort. It is third down and four now for Alabama. Here is a fake. A handoff goes to the fullback. He did not get there. Davis, the fullback, is hit head on by Ross Browner and Ken Dyke, and Alabama will have to punt the ball. Browner playing an excellent game of the defensive left end for Notre Dame. He's never played any less than that. So the Alabama offense did gain some very important yards because they got it up to the 40, and a good punt will put Notre Dame back pretty deep into their own territory. Woody Humphrey is in the game to punt, standing at his 29. Here is the big rush. It is almost blocked, but Humphrey gets off a good one. Burkmeyer signals for and makes a fair catch at the Notre Dame 20. And there the Fighting Irish will go on offense first and 10 with 2.15 to play in the first quarter and no score on the board. Notre Dame very easily could be leading this game 10 to nothing. The Irish missed a short field goal, and then they had it at the three-yard line of Alabama, but fumbled the ball into the end zone. And Alabama got a touchback, took over possession, so it's nothing to nothing. I think a lot of people are thinking about that first drive with those two blitzes by Dewey Mitchell turned the tide for Alabama. And then, of course, the big play by Charlie Hanna when he came in and made the sock on Orsini. First and 10 for Notre Dame at the Irish 20-yard line. Slager looks. He hands up, running with the ball up the middle for the Fighting Irish as Vegas Ferguson breaks one. Tackle comes up across the 25 and out close to the 28-yard line. A good gain by Vegas Ferguson. A gain of eight yards on the play. Paul Harris, the senior from Mobile, Alabama, made the stop for the Crimson Tide. 159 to go in the first quarter of play. No score, Notre Dame and Alabama. Determined run by Vegas Ferguson. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Spun off the tackle by the big tackle, and that was uh, Baumhauer who got the original hit on him. Now Slager sends Doman out wide to the right as a wing back. Here is a handoff running with the ball off the left side as Al Hunter dives across the 30-yard line. And it looks like Al Hunter is going to be very close to a first down. He needed two. He was stopped at the 30, and then he broke off the tackle and dove ahead. And Notre Dame gets the first down on a second try by Al Hunter. It's very important what Hunter did on that particular run because most backs would have been stopped on the initial hit, but Hunter just kept the legs churning and kept moving off of the tackle and did get the important yardage. So Notre Dame has a first down now with 1.29 to go in the first quarter. The clock is running. Notre Dame in blue and gold moving left to right on a beautiful, sunshiny November day here in Notre Dame, Indiana. Slager, the quarterback, takes the snap. He's rolling out to his right, throws. It is caught by Hunter, and he is out across the 35 to the 38. Notre Dame can pass almost at will against Alabama. Alabama is putting two men on McAfee, the tight end now, and Hunter swinging out to the weak side away from the tight end is wide open to make the big reception. Game of eight. Even more important, Don, is the strain that Notre Dame is putting on the linebackers of Alabama when they're sending the backs 
out over the line of scrimmage. And this will tell later on in the game if Notre Dame continues to be successful. Slager throwing the ball very well for Notre Dame. Now he fakes, hands off with the ball as Doman coming on a wing back around. But Alabama's got that stop cold at the Notre Dame 39-yard line. Good defense by the Crimson Tide as Doman came off the right flank. And he was hit on the far side of the field as he crossed the line of scrimmage and got a hit for one yard by Rich Wingo, who is in the game at the weak side linebacker. And Alabama had uh, several players over there. They were not fooled by the misdirection at all. They were waiting for it. Third and one now for Notre Dame at the Irish 40-yard line. No score as the first quarter is wearing down in the final minute. Here is Hunter for a first down off right tackle. Gets out to the 44. Al Hunter gets the great blocks again, this time from the right side. Huffman, Hughes, McDaniel, then the tight end McAfee blew him out. And it's a first down for the Irish at the Notre Dame 44. If Notre Dame hopes to win today, they're going to have to get that offensive line moving the Alabama team out. It's easier said than done because Alabama does a lot of different things with their defensive line. It moves their linebackers around, and it's hard to fulfill your assignments. Now the first quarter wears down, and the gun sounds as the end of the first quarter with the score. Notre Dame nothing and Alabama nothing. Now this for Kelly Springfield Tire. Kelly Springfield Tires. Time for you to check the tire prices now featured at Kelly Springfield Auto Service Stores and participating dealers. It's a coast-to-coast -coast and border-to-border -border event featuring radial passenger tires. Also belted 4-5 poly and snow tires in snow areas. Be smart. Take time out. Time out for tires while the selection is at its best. See the tires on display and make your best deal on quality Kelly Springfield tires for your car. There's a size and type that's right for you and your driving. Score big now. Remember, time out for tires at all Kelly Springfield auto service stores and participating dealers, as well as many Sunoco and other service stations. Kelly Springfield. Tires that make a world of difference. Cricky with Pat Shirt at Notre Dame, Indiana. There's a timeout right now as we pause briefly for station identification. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. WGN Radio, Chicago. And now we're set to go as we open the second quarter. Notre Dame has the ball at their 44-yard line. The Irish quartered as they drove the first two possessions down close but could not get points. It is a nothing-to-nothing -nothing game. Pat? In these statistics, Notre Dame leads in first down 7-3. Notre Dame has 78 yards on the ground, Alabama 59, yards passing, Notre Dame 86, Alabama 16, total yards, Notre Dame 164, Alabama 75. Notre Dame breaks the huddle now, in motion goes Al Hunter, here is the handoff, the fake to No Slager's going to throw, puts it up long, going for the ball is Kelleher, he's out there, hands the ball at the Alabama 25, it's a foot race, Kelleher's going to take it out of the end zone for a touchdown, a brilliant take by Slager, he held the Alabama defense, Kelleher swung out to his left, puts the ball at the 20 yard line of Alabama. Importantly, Don Cricky, he broke a tackle by Mike Kramer on about the 20-yard line. Kramer tried to get it by the shoulders, fell off, fell down onto the turf, and then it was a foot race into the end zone as Kelleher took it in with Alabama's Mike Tucker in pursuit. 80 yards and six plays for Notre Dame as the Irish go ahead in the second quarter with 14.51 to go. Try for extra points. David Reeve is in to try the point after. Slager will hold. Here is the snap from Meyer. It's good. The set down is in. The ball is drilled to the uprights. The knuckleball, it is good. Now, there's a timeout with a score. Notre Dame 7 and Alabama nothing. You're at 35th and the Dan Ryan, home of Bill Vex White Sox. You're only 19 minutes away from Broadway and Foster in Chicago, home of Fanning Cadillac. If you want to see what new surprises the 1977 White Sox have planned, you'll have to wait till April. If you want to see the surprisingly new 1977 Cadillacs, come to Broadway and Foster in Chicago this week. Fanning Cadillac. Notre Dame leads 7 to nothing with 14.51 to go in the second quarter. That touchdown play, the first play of the second quarter, Notre Dame set him up earlier with the reverse to Dolman. They tried the same reverse again, off the fake, and then the pass. Alabama wasn't fooled, though. They had the play covered, but Kelleher just broke loose. 
Yeah, there was two men on Kelleher. He came back and got the ball. A high kickoff by Reeves, not too deep. It is taken by Inkner at the 10. Turns to the outside. He's got some open field at the 20. And now the big hit's put on him right at the 20. Luther Bradley, who pro scouts say has the potential to be a star of the National Football League when he's ready for that, was hit along with Tom Flynn right at the 20. As Inkner had room to go wide, looked like he was going to turn the corner, and Luther Bradley, who weighs 200 pounds and runs a legitimate 9700, came off and really cracked him along with Flynn. So Banna has the ball, first in 10 of the tides, 20 yard line. Notre Dame has just put the first points up in the second quarter on a 56 yard pass play. O'Rear has the ball, misses his hand up, dives ahead across the 20, and out close to the 23 yard line. Ken Dyke hit him, looked like a broken play pass. It did, and uh, O'Rear is coming in with Culliver and also Johnny Davis remaining in the Alabama backfield with him. So Bear Bryant isn't making that drastic a change in his lineup here, starting the offensive part of the second quarter for the Tide. Notre Dame comes out of that with good field position. Well, Bear Bryant, as far as um, football is concerned, said it's valuable for people to rally around. He said, you never heard of anybody rallying around a math exam, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Notre Dame will be huddling on the 30-yard line. 7 to nothing in favor of Notre Dame. Big pass to Kelleher. Broke it open here for Notre Dame. A one-touchdown lead. The Irish offense has been able to move against Alabama. Two drives in the first quarter that were blunted by Alabama. With the score, 7 to nothing in favor of Notre Dame. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for the Teamsters. Are you a test pilot? Interior decorator, telephone repairman, news director, social worker, flight control agent, surveyor, draftsman, lab technician, school teacher, chemist, animal trainer, nurse, policeman, or even an announcer. If you work in one of these occupations, there's a good chance that you're one of over 2 million Americans who belong to the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Aren't the Teamsters just a little bit more than what you thought? Notre Dame has the ball in a 7-0 lead in the second quarter. The Irish have it first and 10 just inside their 40-yard line. Slager is dropping back to throw. He's got time. Puts it up. Man is open. McAfee catches another one. He is all the way down to the Alabama 44-yard line right over the middle. The ball is coming right in out of numbers. Slager throwing beautifully. And McAfee now with four receptions. He is drilled every time he catches it, but he hasn't coughed up the ball once. He's got four receptions for 67 yards. Murray Leg had to run in hit him at the moment of impact. McAfee going full speed, 250 pounds into 186. Slager's completed 9 of 12 for 158 yards in the touchdown. Slager's going to throw again. Puts it up. Oh, Kelleher was so close to the ball at the Alabama 30, but it was just overthrown. Swinging out of the backfield was Al Hunter. It came in a little high for Hunter, but Kelleher was a little bit more downfield of the Alabama 30 and could not quite get to the ball. He might have taken it the distance had he done so. It'll be second down and 10 now for Notre Dame as the Irish are passing very effectively against an Alabama defense that has not mounted a big pass rush yet. Yes, Notre Dame has buried its plays very much, and on that last play, it would have been a foot race between Keller and Kelleher for a touchdown, had Kelleher gotten the football. So now it is second down and 10 for Notre Dame. Here is a handoff up the middle of Vegas Ferguson. He breaks inside. He's got a lot of power, this kid. Vegas Ferguson gets three times, drives all the way down to the 37, but I think we're going to have a motion penalty against Notre Dame. A uh, penalty marker is down in Notre Dame backfield. It is a legal motion against Notre Dame, and so now it'll be second down and 15 for the Fighting Irish as they'll move the ball back to the Notre Dame for the Alabama 49-yard line. When there's a super effort, and like on that last play, you always hate to see it nullified by a penalty because uh, an athlete is showing you his uh, talent and his desire to perform, and Vegas Ferguson has shown a couple of runs here this afternoon in his initial start as a Notre Dame player that have certainly impressed this fans, uh, these fans here. He actually, he's electric when he gets the ball, and as we said before, he is a 9-4 sprinter. Notre Dame was a very disappointing football team last week, and they are not today. Notre Dame is ready to play, and they lead the game 7-0 in a second and 15. Slager gives off on a draw. Vegas Ferguson dives down to the Alabama 46-yard line, and that's going to bring up a third down and 12 now for Notre Dame as the clock is running in the second quarter. 12 minutes and 29, 12.28 left to play. The Irish scoring in the game on a 56-yard pass play from Slager to Kelleher. 
and Ferguson broke a tackle by Baumhauer on the line of scrimmage and then moved off and broke a tackle by a linebacker and picked up valuable yardage for Notre Dame. Third down, 12 yards to go now. The pennants which ring the stadium high above Notre Dame Stadium are straight out with the wind at Notre Dame's back. Irish in blue and gold moving right to left in the second quarter. Slager timing pattern triggers it. Kelleher catches the ball at the 32. What a reception. One of the great receptions of the year. Kelleher went way up in the air. Got the ball at his fingertips. He was hit. He lost it for a moment. Grabbed it coming down. His 14-yard gain and a first down for Notre Dame. A fantastic catch on a slant-in pattern because the ball was thrown high and hard. He was hit at the very moment he got the ball, juggled it, brought it in, and fell down with the ball tucked into his numerals. Beautiful catch for the player who scored 22 touchdowns as a running back in the state of Washington. He can play football. Dan Kelleher, hand up, goes right up the middle, running with the ball is Willard Browner, who's just come in the game for Notre Dame. The freshman fullback, the third Browner brother. And Willard Browner powers straight ahead for a gain of almost three yards. It'll be second down along seven. The defensive tackles of Alabama, Charlie Hannon and Bob Baumhauer were on the stop. That and back into the Notre Dame lineup now is Vegas Ferguson. He just went off for a few moments to do talk, talk to Coach Dan Devine and his staff. Notre Dame breaks the huddle. Out wide, far side is Kelleher. Wide to the left is Tom Doman. Wide to the right is Kelleher. It is second down along seven for Notre Dame. Hand up up the middle. Vegas Ferguson breaks open. He's inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 there. Right up the middle, Calvin Parker finally made the tackle as Vegas Ferguson with extraordinary power for a 6'1", 194-pound running back is breaking tackle after tackle, and he drives ahead for the first down. And Vegas Ferguson just went for Notre Dame's 11th first down of the afternoon. He broke a tackle by Dewey Mitchell on about the 22 to gain the extra yardage. Notre Dame has totally dominated the football game, leading 7-0 right now again. Vegas Ferguson up the middle, inside the pan, and down to the 5-yard line. The blocking was led by Huffman and Hughes, Notre Dame's offensive line. Is an overmatch for Alabama's defensive front. They're blowing them right off the ball as the snap is made. And Don, in particular, Ernie Hughes is having a superb football game. Hughes is a real hitter on the football field, going over 250 pounds. Not only a great pulling guard, but also, as he showed on that last play, when you have to wedge him out for a back when he runs in behind you, he does the job. Now Kelleher streaks in, and here we have Notre Dame has 12 men on the field, but timeout is quickly signaled for it. Notre Dame doesn't want to lose field position, they have it first and goal. Right now there's a timeout on the field with the score, Notre Dame 7, Alabama nothing. From the very first day our brewery was opened, Heilemann's Old Style has been fully, that's fully poisoned, naturally carbonated in the traditional old world way. Poisoning is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Most expensive because poisoning takes more time. A pure brewing, double brewing art that Old Style insists on using to this very day. When you brew a beer once, you've got a good beer. But when you brew a beer twice, you've got a great light beer. And that, in essence, is what poisoning is all about. Sure, we could use shortcuts, but we don't. And we won't. Because at Old Style, we don't aim to make the most beer only the best. That's why Old Style has been fully, that's fully poisoned, naturally carbonated since 1853. Try Old Style and taste the difference poisoning makes. G. Heilemann Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. We have 10.38 left to play in the first half here at Notre Dame. The Irish lead 7-0 right now. They're challenging for perhaps another score. Al Hunter has run with the ball but six times but has gained 57 yards. Vegas Ferguson has 48 yards and eight carries. The freshman getting his first start today. Now Willard Browner's in the backfield along with Hunter. Slager hands off to Hunter, turns wide to the right, dances inside the five and down to the two-yard line. It'll be second and goal from there. The power sweep to the right. Al Hunter picking his way behind blockers is knocked down by the strong safety. Murray Legg, a sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. Good blocking by Ted Horansky out of the line. And out of the backfield, Willard Browner providing some blocks on the five-yard line. And Horansky farther ahead to give Hunter the room to run down to the two. Notre Dame with the ball on the far hash mark. This is a million-dollar football game. A million dollars to the winner of this game because the winner will go to the Cotton Bowl in all probability. Hand off. Willard Browner in standing up. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Or Al Hunter. Hunter got the hand off and took it off the left side. And it's a touchdown for Notre Dame. 
The Irish going 60 yards in nine plays. They move out in front 13 to nothing. We were mentioning Ernie Hills' work at the other guard. We have to mention Horansky, who got his start this afternoon at the left guard spot because Mike Carney is unable to play. And Horansky, who played left tackle last week, is looking superb at left guard. Big block on that last play by Horansky. An extraordinary turnabout in this football team. A Notre Dame team that was embarrassed on national television by Pittsburgh now coming back. And here is the extra point drilled high in the stands. It is up and good by David Reeves. Now with the score, Notre Dame 14 and Alabama nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Now this for Certainty Building Products. If your attic has less than six inches of insulation on the floor, you're being robbed every day without ever knowing it. To stop the under-insulation robber and possibly save up to 30% on the cost of fuel to heat and cool your home, inspect your attic. Then see your neighborhood CertainTeed building materials dealer or insulation contractor. CertainTeed fiberglass attic insulation will stop that robber once and for all. Those fans who follow Notre Dame football and like to get new heroes along the way, of course, they have to think about Vegas Ferguson now. 48 yards, 8 rushes, just a freshman, lots of speed. And Al Hunter with a big touchdown. He's gone 62 yards, 8 carries. Here's David Reed hitting the ball with the wind in his back. It carries very high. It is taken by Inkster at the 10-yard line. Cuts out across the 15, across the 20, and then swept under as he gets out to the 23-yard line. Orsini, a very disappointed young man who fumbled for the first time this season when Notre Dame was challenging for its first touchdown. Lost the ball in the end zone and the drive was stopped, made the hit. Notre Dame has crunched for 285 yards total, 172 through the air. They balanced that attack well, 132 yards on the ground. Alabama's total yardage up to this point, 83 yards, with 9.57 to go second quarter. Here is the quarterback, O'Rear, rolling out. He's going to run with the ball, crosses the 20 and the 25 and the 30, and he's finally knocked down, running straight ahead out to the 35-yard line. As Jack O'Rear, Notre Dame is keying so intently on the back that the quarterbacks have been gaining yardage for Alabama. He was looking to pitch back but saw the opening. Ken Dyke made the tackle. It is now 9.50 showing on the second quarter clock. It is running. And Notre Dame is in the lead 14-0 after a 12-yard run by quarterback Jack O'Rear, who was supposed to be hurt, was a doubtful starter. But when it's Notre Dame and Alabama, everybody plays. Bear Bryant says this year the Sugar Bowl is in South Bend. That's today. Here is O'Rear running wide to the left, turns the corner, crosses the 40. Restick, the free safety, gets him around the neck, but O'Rear crosses the 50-yard line on the far side and is knocked out of the 48-yard line of Notre Dame. A big block by Tad Flanagan from his wide receiver position cleared the way once Jack O'Rear got beyond the line of scrimmage. O'Rear is very, very quick and can take advantage of that daylight when he sees it. 17 yards for O'Rear on that last play. The ball will be on the 48-yard line as Alabama moves into Notre Dame territory. 9.26 to go, second quarter. Irish lead 14 to nothing. Mutual President Ed Little and everyone at Mutual delighted you can join us for Notre Dame football as Davis gets the call right up the middle off the left side. A power run. He breaks inside the Notre Dame 45-yard line. And down to the 44, he gained four yards. It'll be second down and six as the tackle was made for Notre Dame by middle linebacker Bob Golick and Ross Browner. Running behind the block of K.J. Lazenby on the left side of the Alabama line. Lazenby providing the hole for the back. So Alabama comes out of the huddle, second and six. The Alabama quarterbacks have run the ball well. Rutledge, three carries for 35. O'Rear, four for 34. Here is a handoff up the middle again. Goes the power back. The fullback comes down to the Notre Dame 41-yard line. It'll bring up a third down. And about two as Alabama now moves the ball down close to the 40-yard line of Notre Dame. Bob Golick again on the stop. This game is being heard on over 300 stations on a mutual broadcasting system and around the world on American Forces Radio. Notre Dame football on a mutual broadcasting system. Now Alabama breaks the huddle. The tide is starting to move the ball now as Notre Dame's gone out in front 14-0. Again, they go up the middle. This time Davis is wrapped by Golick as he cuts the handoff. I don't think he got the first down. He'll have to unpile. Mike Calhoun, a big 255-pound sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio, was also on the stop for the Fighting Irish. And Davis, the power back who's averaging 5-7 a carry, is again stopped by Notre Dame. Alabama's 0 for 5 on previous third downs. And now it's going to be fourth and one, and Alabama's looking to the bench. What do we do here? After two straight plays of running behind K.J. Lazenby, who opened up two good holes, they went to running behind the guards and the centers, and Notre Dame pinched in and stopped the run up the middle of the line. Here they come out of the huddle. They're going to try. Alabama needs points. They're liable to try to burn Notre Dame with a pass. No, they go to the run, and they get the first down. Running with the ball with Kevin, and he cuts off the left side. Pete Kevin from Thomaston, Georgia. 
Gets the first down for the Crimson Tide to the Notre Dame 35-yard line. And that was predictable because Lazenby had opened up the big holes for them on the last series, so they went back to him on, a, on the fourth down try, and he didn't let him down. Big hole by Lazenby. Good block. Notre Dame leads 14-0, but now Alabama's coming back. Here is O'Rear dropping to throw. He's looking, fires over the middle. Open is Newsom. He dives and catches the ball at the 13-yard line as penalty markers go down. Avi Newsom, a diving reception. There's going to be an interference call. We'll see if it goes against Notre Dame. They'll go with the reception because he got more yardage with the reception. That is going to be the call. So now Alabama mounts a challenge. The Crimson Tide will have it all. First and 10 at the Notre Dame 11-yard line. Lazy Boy Chair Company will award a famous Lazy Boy Chair to the respective schools and the names of today's outstanding offensive and defensive players. Judges, Cooper Rollo, sports editor, Chicago Tribune, Mike McKenzie, Tuscaloosa News, Joe Doyle, South Bend Tribune. We'll announce the winners of the awards before the before the conclusion of today's game. Notre Dame leads it, 14 to nothing. The Crimson Tide of Alabama maintains its poise. Driving now to the 11-yard line of Notre Dame. First down 10. Alabama looking good right now at 7.30 to play in the first half. And Notre Dame leading 14-0. O'Rea rolls out. He looks for blockers. He doesn't have any. Now he does. He gets inside the 5 and down to the 2. Cutting wide to the light. Jack O'Rear picks his way through Notre Dame tacklers. And finally, when it looked like he was stopped, he broke loose. And Ross Browner didn't get until he got down to the 2-yard line. You wonder how O'Rear found his way clear because it looked like Notre Dame had everybody covered in the Alabama backfield. It looked like everybody was covered when he hit the line of scrimmage, but un all of a sudden he squirmed free and scooted down deep into Notre Dame territory. Ball on the two, Alabama out of the huddle. Alabama has it second and inches for a first down, second and two for a touchdown. Hand up, Kevin has the ball. He's down close to the goal line. He has a first down, but he does not have a touchdown. But Alabama has it now point blank. As Ozzie Newsom and Luther Bradley exchange words on the near flank where they were going one-on-one. -on -one. Calhoun and Scott Zedek were on the tackle for Notre Dame. Again, Alabama tried to run over a hole provided by K.J. Lazenby. It seems that Lazenby is the one who provides the big blocks for them in the Alabama line, at least against Notre Dame, and at least so far this afternoon, 7.02 to go in the second quarter. Notre Dame leads 14 to nothing. Alabama rapping at the door. Now the up back is the power back Davis. Alabama, here's the hand up. Kevin has it. Did he get in? He did not. Notre Dame stops him. On first and goal from a foot away. Notre Dame... Defensive front submarines, the blocking, and then the linebackers come over the top. Golick and Heimkreider and Willie Fry were on the stop for Notre Dame. And the nose of the ball is almost at the goal line. And so with the clock running and 6.30 left to play in the first half, Bama will have it second and goal from inches away. Alabama are going to be tested now. They've gone left two straight times over Lazenby. They come out. Let's see where they go now. Here is the snap. And off, running with the ball is Kevin. He didn't get in. He is thrown down at the one-yard line. Jim Browner, the strong safety, shot the gap and made the hit. And there's actually a loss on the play as the ball will be set down at the one. It'll be third and goal there. And Willie Fry didn't let Lazenby rub him out on that particular play. He was all over the play as well. So Browner coming up to help Willie Fry as the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame hold and actually move Alabama back. The ball is about on the one-yard line. Big moment in this game. Third down. Now Calvin Culliver goes out. John Crow is in the game for Bama. Here is a handoff. Notre Dame. No, O'Rear takes it on a sweep out and scores a touchdown for Alabama. Beautifully done by Jack O'Rear. Made the great fake to his fullback. And then went in on the left side with nobody touching him as O'Rear with the fake held the Notre Dame defense. And Alabama goes 77 yards in 12 plays. Again. They used Lazenby. They sent the man without the ball over Lazenby's hole. Lazenby laid his block. Hole was covered by Notre Dame. Everybody from Notre Dame converged on it, expecting him to go over Lazenby. But O'Rear kept the ball, and nobody was around him as he stepped into the end zone. Bucky Berry will try the point after Rutledge will hold. Here's the snap and set down. He's into the ball. He has it high and up, and it looks good. It is. And Alabama's right back in the game. 5.38 to play in the first half, and it's 14-7 Notre Dame. Mutual, the world's number one radio sports network, brings you Sunday afternoon NFL football. Join Tony Roberts and Tom Pagna, the coach, as Miami meets Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. That's going to be some game. Miami, a very good football team, and Pittsburgh hasn't allowed a touchdown in the last three games. The Steelers seem to be getting it together. That's NFL Sunday afternoon football. That's tomorrow over most of these mutual network stations. Notre Dame has moved the ball well, and Alabama has come back, maintained its poise 
after going behind 14 to nothing in the first part of this second quarter and come back on a big drive to score with Jack O'Rear going into the end zone over the left side after a fake into the line. So Alabama has come back. Score is now 14 to 7. We've got ourselves a good football game. And what is very, very important from the standpoint of who goes to what bowl. We'll have a lot of bowl people, by the way, at halftime who will be talking to us. 5.38 to go in the second quarter. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame have unveiled as a starting fullback, Vegas Ferguson. 9-4 sprinter who has done yeoman duty for the Fighting Irish along with Hunter in the backfield of Notre Dame. Hunter, a 9-3 sprinter. And the Irish on offense have uh, used their passing arm very, very well. Passes to McAfee and Kelleher have helped the Notre Dame offense. And in particular for Alabama, the big thing for them has been the quarterback keeper. That has worked superbly for the Alabama team, particularly since O'Rear has come in. Now back deep for Notre Dame. The receiver, Terry Urich and Al Hunter. It's 14-7 Notre Dame. Into the ball is the Alabama kickoff man. He hits it deep down to the six-yard line. And here is Al Hunter straight up the middle, crosses the 20, breaks into open field, then he's hit at the 28. A neck-high tackle put on by Alabama. Down to make the hit for the Crimson Tide was Donnie Faust. And Notre Dame goes in offense first and 10 at the Irish 28-yard line. We have 5.26 to play in the first half. And Notre Dame is in the lead 14-7. to Checking that Notre Dame offensive line, Webkenberg left tackle, Ted Horansky left guard, Huffman the center, right guard is Hughes, right tackle, McDaniels. Notre Dame has a wide receiver set to the right now. Hunter goes over to the right as a wing back that side. Slager calling signals. Hunter comes in motion. He gets the hand up, comes to his left, turns across the 30, is knocked down at the 32. A gain of four yards on the play with 5.19 to play in the first half. Barry Krause playing the strong linebacker, made the hit for Alabama. It'll be second down and six for Notre Dame. Teamed in the backfield will be Vegas Ferguson and Hunter, along with Slager, the quarterback, and the receivers, the tight end, is going to be McAfee, and the wide receiver will be Dan Kelleher, and uh, Doman will be the wingback. A cloudless sky, brilliant sunshine, temperature in the high 30s, excellent football weather at dry field here at South Bend. Notre Dame in blue and gold, moving right to left in the second quarter, and leading 14-7. Slager looks, throws on the run. He's got a man open. The ball is caught by Doman on the far side. He crosses the 15 and down to the 45-yard line of Alabama. Murray Lake knocks him down. Slager throwing excellent passes off the run. Triggered it down the far sideline in front of the Alabama bench. He hits Doman, his wing back, for a 25-yard gain and a first down. Murray Lake, the Alabama defensive back, did not react fast enough. This is a brand-new defensive backfield for Alabama this year. They uh, just brought it into being at the beginning of the season. They've had some problems with it. And that time on the fly pattern, Notre Dame clicked. Alabama's defense plays a very deep three-man deep coverage, and Notre Dame's coming in under it, hearing the throw again. He looks, he has time, he fakes, he throws over the middle. The ball is dropped. Jay McAfee was separated from the ball at the 26-yard line on an excellent hit. Slager was right there with the ball. McAfee's hands were outstanding. He got the ball, then was hit by leg and lost it. It'll be second and ten. That time, Ken McAfee was a marked man. He, in the original part of the game in the first quarter, Happened to get free because he was getting single coverage. That time there were four men around Ken McAfee when the ball came to him. And he had absolutely no chance to get a completion on the play. Slager has put the ball in the air 15 times. He has completed 11 for 197 yards and one touchdown. It is second and 10 for Notre Dame at the Alabama 44-yard line. Irish lead 14-7. Here is a handoff running up the middle of the ball as Vegas Ferguson. He is inside the 40 and down to the 31, down to the 36-yard line. A power run off the left side and freshman Vegas Ferguson breaking tackles. Reminds you a little bit of Simpson, O.J. Simpson, the way he runs, twisting those shoulders and throwing off tacklers. He gets ahead now for a gain of seven yards. It'll be third and three. A lineman like Ted Oransky will open up the hole on that last play. Really likes it because... Uh, when the back goes beyond him, uh, once he's opened up that hole, the back can do all kinds of good things for him. And he sees a big game. That makes him happy. Third and three, hand up to Hunter. He's inside the 35-yard line and gets down close to the 33 where he had to go for the first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. It's going to be close enough to measure as the ball is right about at the Alabama 33-yard line. So we have an official timeout with 3.44 to play. In the first half, as the chain markers come out, this is a big weekend at Notre Dame. As, as Rene is sold out as it always is, Notre Dame having been on the road now for three consecutive weeks. Coming home to play Alabama, and Notre Dame is just short of the first down.
just short of the first down, so it'll be fourth and inches. And now here comes Vegas Ferguson in from the sideline with the play. He gives it to Slager. Slager squats in the huddle. His big linemen stand around him as Notre Dame in blue and gold, glistening bright gold helmets. Slager takes the quarterback keep first down Notre Dame. He went right behind Hoffman, and Hoffman got him there. And so, with three and a half minutes to go in the first half, Notre Dame drives on. 14 first downs now for Notre Dame. 14 first downs. It is first and 10 for the Irish at the 32-yard line of Alabama. Notre Dame breaks the huddle. Kelleher goes wide to the right. On the left flank is Doman. Slager has been throwing beautifully for Notre Dame. Alabama has not been defending against the pass as Slager has rolled out. Now, a man leaves early for Notre Dame. The right tackle, T. McDaniels. It'll be a procedure against Notre Dame and cost him five. So Notre Dame will have five more yards to go. They got a mix-up on the signals as McDaniels went off. And the assessment will be against the Irish, five yards. It'll be first down and 15 yards to go. Uh, Notre Dame will be huddling back on about the 48-yard line. Notre Dame has been able to move the ball against the Alabama defense. Uh, actually, the score could have been a little more had it not been for the fact that the Alabama defense in the first quarter when Notre Dame drove in close managed to stop them on a couple of big plays. Dewey Mitchell and Charlie Hanna on two separate drives coming up with those plays. Notre Dame could have easily had a 10-0 lead after its first possession, but Alabama held. Now, it is first and 15 for Notre Dame. Here is the handoff. Vegas Ferguson runs inside the 35-yard line, gets down to the 33. He got back the yardage that was lost on the penalty, but it's going to be now second down and about 10 or 11 yards to go for the first down for Notre Dame at the Alabama 33. At the half, Pitt leads West Virginia 14-3. At the end of the first quarter, Michigan and Illinois tied up 7-7. Second quarter, Maryland 7, Clemson nothing. First quarter, Howard 7, and that's Harvard 7 and Yale nothing. You have to think that Slager's going to keep throwing. He's had so much success. He's rolling out. He looks. He puts it up on the run. McAfee has another one, and this man is. McAfee, who made All-American as a sophomore, goes up in a crowd. They cannot take it away from him. And he pulls his way down close to the 21-yard line and very close to a first down, close enough to measure. And Murray Leg had tremendous coverage on that play, Don. He did everything a defensive back could do to stop McAfee. Everything. Been right with him. The coverage on the play recently on McAfee has been excellent. They've had two men right on him, but still he catches the football. Now he paused briefly for station identification. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. WGN Radio, Chicago. First down, Notre Dame, Pat. The Irish roar for another one. And by the way, McAfee has caught five passes for 79 yards as Notre Dame huddles on the 33-yard line. It's 14-7 in favor of Notre Dame. The Irish driving again. 2.36 to go in the second quarter. The blue-shirted Notre Dame team breaks the huddle. Alabama's defense being tested. A very important drive. If Notre Dame can score, they go in with a 21-7 lead. If Alabama can stop them, they're right in the game. Here is a handoff to Hunter. Breaks wide to the right. Powers his way down to the 16-yard line. He got five yards for Notre Dame before he was thrown back by a wave of Alabama tacklers led by Bob Baumhauer and Dewey Mitchell. The temperature here in South Bend is 36 degrees, but it's a perfect day for football. I was wondering before the game what this cool weather would do to the intricate ball handling of the wishbone offense that Alabama has, and it certainly has not affected it at all so far because Alabama has, hasn't committed any errors at all. Now it is second down and a long five for Notre Dame. Here is Ferguson, breaks out to the right, turns the corner, he's going to go in, standing up for a touchdown. Vegas Ferguson gets the great, great block, and then with great speed turns to the outside and runs it in from 16 yards out. It's a touchdown for Notre Dame. Oh, how nice it is to have a 276-pound right tackle who can lay the big block for you, and that was Steve McDaniel of Seattle, Washington. And with great speed, such as Ferguson have, he dipped inside after McDaniels made the block, made the dip at the right time, then moved outside, cut to the outside at about the 13, and away he went. Believe me when I tell you that Notre Dame is ready to play football today. They now move out in front 20 to nothing. Here's the snap, the set down. Reeve is into the football right through the middle and way up into the stands. And with 145 left to play. In the first half, it is Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 7. A very, very convincing display by the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame so far this afternoon. And in particular, a great display by Vegas Ferguson, the sensational 9-4 sprinter freshman who has shown he can run with abandon from the fullback position. He's gained 76 yards and 11 carries. That goes to an average of better than 7 yards a carry. 
72 yards and 11 carries for Al Hunter as Notre Dame has roared on the ground, but they've moved it through the air as well. But we found from this Alabama team that even though they've given up yardage, they will not lose their poise. After Notre Dame assumed a 14 to nothing lead, Alabama came back, particularly on that quarterback keeper series with Jack O'Rear running the team. So don't expect Alabama to fold up. They're not going to do that this afternoon. They're too well coached. 21-7 in favor of Notre Dame. David Reeve moves right to left into the football. Hits it high with the wind at his back. It's going to carry all the way down to the one-yard line. Kelvin Culliver has the ball there. Cuts out wide to left. Tries to turn the corner. Flynn is in pursuit. Flynn can't get him. Now he does. At the 20-yard line. Tom Flynn, a sophomore from West Palm Beach, Florida. With great speed, he's always the first man down on kickoff coverage. Calvin Culliver turned out on him, and Flynn got him around the ankles. Culliver got another five yards falling. It'll be first and ten for Alabama at the Crimson Tide 21-yard line with 140 to play in the first half. You know, yesterday I was talking to Coach Devine. He was talking about all the sets he was going to use against the wishbone formation, and I thought to myself, football has certainly become an awful lot more complicated than when I was playing it. There's a lot of formations out there. Alabama's going with the half wishbone now, really. Here is the up back Davis. Notre Dame's wrapping him. Davis is hit. He drives ahead for a couple of yards. But Davis is getting hit right off the ball by Bob Golick and Willie Fry. Golick is looking to slock him every time he gets the ball, and Davis has been held way down and running the ball. He's carried the ball now nine times in this game for 28 yards. He's a very, very determined runner with great strength. Actually, most backs wouldn't have gained any yardage on that play at all. He gained four, second and six. Golick got him as fast as the handoff. They go again up the middle, and again, Davis gets the ball. This time he gets nothing at all as Heimkreiter. An All-American candidate from Roger Bacon High School in Cincinnati who leads Notre Dame in tackles, a sophomore, came in to make the big hit. Dyke was also on the stop for Notre Dame. And it's now third down and seven for Alabama. The ball at the Crimson Tide's 25-yard line. Time very much a factor, 50 seconds to play, and the clock is running. 47 seconds to go as Alabama and White and Crimson. Hands up, up the middle. They're looking to run out the clock. They're going to concede Notre Dame a 21-7 halftime lead. Calhoun makes the tackle. Notre Dame might start calling timeouts to get the ball back. Now I think they're going to do that. They do. They stop the clock with 34 seconds left. And so Notre Dame will at least get a little chance to move with that football. They might get a chance to get it in field position or at least uh, in position to get a field goal if they're lucky, if there's a bad punt. Of course, Reeve has great range with his toe, but you can't tell about the wind direction or what effect that will have on a kick. It's coming from the northwest, basically. So uh, that, of course, would pose a problem for Reeve if he were to get the opportunity. Alabama does not have a super punter. He averages 36 yards per kick. Uh, however, he does get it high and get good hang time on it. That's Rod Nelson. He's from Birmingham, six feet tall, 185. And what coaches want really is a very, very good hang time for the uh, punter. Alabama, of course, uh, now just hopes to run out the clock here at halftime with halftime coming up, 34 seconds to go. We'll be talking to a whole bunch of bowl officials coming up at halftime. Be uh, talking to Wesley Paxson of the Gator Bowl Association. Sugar Bowl folks are going to be here. We're just going to have a big discussion about the bowls at halftime, and sure hope you'll stay tuned. Here comes that punt now. Woody Humphrey will punt the ball. Bergmeyer's back deep for Notre Dame. Notre Dame comes with a big rush, but he gets it away. Humphrey does. Not too far. Bergmeyer comes up and takes an Alabama hop. They're going to let it roll. It's going to be down at the Notre Dame 42-yard line. Along the near sidelines, congratulating the Notre Dame defensive unit, uh, their defensive coaches. Yato, the defensive line coach, stays in the press box and calls down formations. George Kelly, the linebacker coach. Paul Schultz, the defensive secondary coach. They were as embarrassed as the Notre Dame players at the yardage Notre Dame gave up to an underdog Georgia Tech team last week. But today, the Notre Dame defense has risen up. And right now, with time running out in the first half, Notre Dame leads Alabama 21-7. Slager's looking to throw. He eludes one tackler. He's on the run. Two men are after. Puts it up on the run. He's got McAfee. Incomplete at the 40. McAfee dove, could not get to the ball. And Kelleher, after McAfee missed the ball, had a chance for it on the 35-yard line. It's still, if that pass were completed, they would have been out of field goal range and wouldn't have had a chance to put it up. Now, at halftime, we'll be talking to Bud Led Dudley of the Liberty Bowl, Mike Smith of the Sugar Bowl. Of course, Mike Smith, uh, Don, is a former basketball player at Notre Dame, and Wesley Paxson of the Gator Bowl. Notre, Notre Dame, Dame, ready to go here, Pat, as they send... Al Hunter out of the game, and Willard Brown are in. There's 24 seconds to play. 
In the first half, Notre Dame will go to the pass as they have the ball at their 43-yard line. Here's Slager dropping to throw. He looks over the middle. Home run ball. All the way downfield, going for the ball was freshman David Weimer. It is incomplete at the Alabama 15-yard line. Slager can get it a long way in the air. He threw the ball about 55 yards in the air. Too far, it'll be third down and 10 as Notre Dame tries to burn Bama on. They got him once that way, the first score of the game. A 56-yard pass play, Slager to Dan Kelleher. For those people wondering about the condition of the field, they had this field covered by a tarpaulin all week, even though it did snow in South Bend throughout this week, particularly on Wednesday. It in no way affected this field. As a matter of fact, it's a fast track today. It is third down and ten, a very fast track. Excellent condition. Now they go to the run, does Notre Dame to Vegas Ferguson. He has hit at the line of scrimmage as the Irish will let the clock run out. The clock is winding down. The first half will come to an end. As Notre Dame will have a 21-7 lead. They send their punting unit out on fourth down. But let's see, Alabama now calls a timeout with five seconds left so they can get a run back. So Notre Dame will punt the ball. Resting is on the field. He'll be punting with the wind at his back. Statistically, Notre Dame has dominated the football game. The passing of Slager has been outstanding. He has thrown the ball 17 times. He has completed 12 for 209 yards. Notre Dame has rushed with the ball 27 times for 153 yards. Al Hunter has gained 72 yards and 11 carries. Vegas Ferguson, the freshman, getting his first start, has gained 76 yards and 12 carries. So Bama drops back Ozzie Newsom back to the 15-yard line. He'll have one crack at a long punt return. I think one of the most impressive things this afternoon, too, is the way the Notre Dame offensive line has really gotten off their marks and completed their assignments here this afternoon against an excellent Alabama defense because coming into this game this afternoon, Alabama had been doing the job defensively on their opponents, only allowing some 140 yards per game on the ground and uh, about 83 yards through the air. This has been a defense that has performed this year. Notre Dame offensive coordinator is Merv Johnson. He has this team ready with a great passing game, along with Tom. Here is the punt now downfield. The ball is going to be fielded by Newsom at the 16-yard line. Cuts back to his right. He's trying to turn the corner. Notre Dame's going to get him there and hard as Newsom goes down at the 19. And the first half comes to an end. That is the end of the first half with the score. Notre Dame 21, Alabama 7. The score at halftime, Notre Dame 21. And Alabama 7, the Fighting Irish 21, Alabama 7. Pat Sheridan along with Don Crickey from Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame, Alabama, and Don Crickey, the game in progress. All for Notre Dame is Vegas Ferguson running straight up the middle. Ferguson is out to the 30-yard line. A power shortage, a very brief one, fortunately. Forced us off the air, for which we apologize, but we're back with you now. Notre Dame football, Luther Bradley of Notre Dame has just intercepted an Alabama pass in the Notre Dame end zone. A one-handed interception. And so the Alabama challenge is stopped, and now Notre Dame has the ball back. And they'll have it third and less than a yard at their 29-yard line. And it was interesting the way the Alabama team took that kickoff from the Notre Dame team beginning of the second half and marched it right down the field. Now here's a quarterback keep, and Rick Slager dives across the 30, and he got the first down. He had to get right to the 30, and Slager got over the 30-yard line by just inches, but it'll be a first down for Notre Dame. The scoreboard clock is out here at Notre Dame. We have no official time, but we're about three minutes into the third quarter here at South Bend with Notre Dame in the lead over Alabama 21-7. And it's a first down 10 situation for the Fighting Irish, and the score is Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 7. Rick Slager is the quarterback for Notre Dame. He sends Al Hunter in motion, gives off to the first back through, running right up the middle is Vegas Ferguson. Hits out across the 30, close to the 34-yard line where Danny Collins, a left end out of Birmingham, Alabama, made the stop for the Crimson Tide. And so it will be second down and six coming up for Notre Dame. Moose Krause, the athletic director of Notre Dame, had an interesting observation at halftime when everyone was congratulating the Notre Dame people about the great first half. He said, you beat Alabama with four quarters of football, not two. This game is a long way from over. We're early in the third quarter. Notre Dame holding to a 21-7 lead. It's a very poised Alabama football team. They've been in big games years and years and years. They come back. Here is a handoff to Hunter. Breaks into open field and cuts down the near sideline. Steps out of bounds, but there's a penalty marker down. It looks like it's going to be motion pad against Notre Dame. Well, we're mentioning how Alabama is such a poised team. They've gone to bowls for 17 years in a row. Alabama has won five straight Southeastern Conference champions, championships, and this is a 
very, very tough conference to win year in and year out like Alabama does. So the penalty coming up against Notre Dame. They're going to march it off now. Notre Dame's offensive line, we haven't set the offensive line yet. We might as well do that now. At left guard, it's going to be Ted Horansky who's getting a start because of his fine play last week against Georgia Tech at left tackle. And uh, at left tackle, it's going to be Webb Convert. At center, Big Dave Huffman. The right guard is Ernie Hughes. The right tackle is McDaniels, who blocked so beautifully on Ferguson's touchdown run. Now Notre Dame has the ball, second down and 11 at the Irish 29-yard line. Slager sends Hunter in motion. Here is the fake, the handoff to Hunter on the left end. Turns the corner, crosses the 30. Alabama's coming in with a head-high hit. That was very close to a face mask. In fact, it was far closer than close. It was a face mask, but there's no flag. They're coming in high on Al Hunter, who's run for big yardage against Alabama. Barry Kraus made the tackle. And on that play... Hunter had the interference in front of him. He had the hole. However, Krause came from behind and caught Hunter from behind and made the stop on the 32-yard line ball on the near hash mark. Notre Dame in the bright, gleaming gold helmets, iridescent, blue jerseys, gold pants, moving right to left. Hand off Vegas. Ferguson shoots up the middle. Can he play football? Across the 40, he's got a first down for Notre Dame. A straight-ahead run, and Vegas Ferguson tore it right up the middle for... Just over 10 yards and a first down for the Irish. You just give Vegas Ferguson a crease in the middle of that line, and he goes. Ernie Hughes and Dave Huffman with the block that moved out the Alabama defenders. And then, once he got in the secondary, Vegas did it all by himself. And here comes the measurement for the first down. He has been a revelation from the fullback spot here in the game against Alabama. First half performance was astounding. First down, Notre Dame. The ball just past the 40-yard line. On the near hash mark, Notre Dame leads 21-7 over Alabama. The Irish huddling on their own 30-yard line, moving it on the ground right now, but they have put it in the air. 14 for 20 for Al Hunter so far this afternoon. Vegas Ferguson has run with the ball 15 times. He has gained 91 yards. Now the scoreboard time is back in. 9.50 to play in the third quarter of the clock running. Notre Dame leads Alabama 21-7. Rick Slager is the quarterback. Hunter goes in motion to the left. Hand up, up the middle goes to Vegas Ferguson. Straight ahead, power run, crosses the 45 and out to the 47. They're putting the man in motion, Notre Dame. That's pulling a linebacker. Then Vegas Ferguson's moving right out behind the zone blocks as Notre Dame is firing off the ball and moving out Alabama on straight ahead power blocking. They're trying to get Alabama to overreact just a little bit, and uh, they're successful at it, as a matter of fact, because Ferguson picked up five on the last play. Again, the blocks by Hughes and Huffman. Alabama drove down the field with a passing game to open the third quarter, but then a one-handed interception by Luther Bradley in the end zone stopped them. Here is a handoff to Hunter around the left end. Alabama with a big defensive play. Dewey Mitchell and Barry Krause come across to make the stop for the tie as Notre Dame is knocked down at the 46-yard line. And there it will be third down and four coming up for the Fighting Irish. Slager looks over to the sideline, looks to his quarterback coach Ron Toman and to his offensive coordinator Merv Johnson, gets the play. Third and four for Notre Dame. For those of you who did not hear, Alabama took the kickoff at the start of the second half and marched right down the field. And Luther Bradley intercepted a pass at the goal line, went into the end zone, Notre Dame took possession. Chris Haynes is on the left flank now. Here's Slager handing up. Running with the ball is Doman. He crosses the 50-yard line and is down close to the Alabama 49-yard line. And again, it's going to be very close to a Notre Dame first down. Doman came off the right wing on a counter play. Came back right to left. Cut back and crossed the 50-yard line. He was knocked down by the middle guard, Gus White. Right now, there's a timeout on the field with the score. Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 7. Painting your home or assigning employees to paint your place of business seems to have saved a few dollars. For an amateur job, tremendous risks are involved. Any mishap with needed ladders, scaffolds, and equipment can mean injury or the liability of injured employees, not to mention the harmful ingredients in certain paints that create long-term hazards you're unaware of. So play it safe and get bottom-line value with professional painting. This message is from the Painters District Council, number 14. Notre Dame has been trying very hard to get Alabama to overreact on reverses and traps up the middle, but so far it hasn't worked. And not for touchdown yardage or big chunks of yardage, but it's worked for good yardage for first downs. First down for Notre Dame. They've converted 8 of 11 third downs for first downs. Here is the handoff. Al Hunter runs to his right, cuts up field behind that power blocking. He's down close to the Alabama 45-yard line. The Crimson Tide, wave of white jerseys coming in. As the tackle was made by Bob Baumhauer, and the right end, 
Danny Collins. But Notre Dame picks up four on the carry. It'll be second and six in the Bama 46. There's a great matchup in uh, that line with Baumhauer opposite Ernie Hughes and McDaniels on the right side of the Notre Dame line. Baumhauer, a preseason All-America choice. Now second down and six. And to the wing to the left goes Al Hutter. Slager with a long count. Lone setback is Ferguson. Slager throws on the run. Intercepted by Alabama. One man has a shot at Barry Cross, and he is knocked down at the Notre Dame 30. Slager threw the ball right to an Alabama defensive end. He was trying to trigger it in the far flat to Doman coming off the wing, and Krause got it right on his numbers and almost ran it back. But coming across to make the tackle for Notre Dame was offensive tackle Steve McDaniel. And Alabama went into the right defensive call on that play. They dropped their defensive ends off. That's the so-called Alabama victory defense. It's designed to stop the pass play, and it did. Alabama out of the huddle, into the wishbone. So Slager makes his first mistake of the day. He has quarterbacked an excellent football game for Notre Dame. Here is the rollout. Ross Browner makes the sack. The quarterback never got a chance to move. Willie Fry came from one side. Ross Browner came from another. And Ross Browner has now made more tackles for losses in one season than any player in Notre Dame history. That's his 20th. Well, Ross Browner and Willie Fry and the two tackles in the middle of the line, Dyke and Calhoun just inundated the offensive line of Alabama. They were all over the Alabama offensive backfield before the Alabama play could even develop. At quarterback for Alabama is Jeff Rutledge. He is a good thrower. It is second down and 13. Rutledge is rolling out. Here comes the rush. Rutledge is going to run with the ball, and they're going to knock him down again. A hard hit on Rutledge at the 32-yard line. He got back only about two yards. That'll make it third and 11. Jim Browner, the strong safety, and brother Ross Browner, the left end, both converged on Rutledge and hit him hard, but he's up and all right. The key play on that for Notre Dame was on the 35-yard line when Heimkreider had the original shot. He wasn't able to hold Rutledge, but it broke up the timing of the keeper play of Alabama. And by that time, Browner was able to get over and make the stop. Now, Ozzie Newsom goes wide to the right. Alabama has the ball third down and almost 12. Rutledge is rolling out. He pitches ahead with the ball as Kevin. He runs ahead, but he did not get the first down. He was blitzed and hit by Becker and by Jim Browner, a driving tackle. That was the Roger Staubach shuffle pass play. The quarterback, Rutledge, taking the snap, dropping like he was going to throw, and then he pitched it forward with a basketball pass to Cavan, who ran off tackle, got ahead for good yardage, but it's going to bring up fourth and six now for Bama. Cavan was hit by two runaway locomotives. That's exactly the way Doug Becker and Browner were. Jim Browner hit him on one side and Becker on the other, and they were both going full tilt. It is fourth and five, and Bama's going for it, trailing 21-7. Rolling out as Rutledge pitches back to Newsom, and he's got a first down and is inside the 15-yard line. Rutledge was hit hard just as he released the ball, but Newsom on an end around, took the pitch back and cut down the far side of the field. Doug Becker knocked him down for Notre Dame, but it's a first down for Alabama at the Irish 13. There was brilliant execution by Alabama on that play. Uh, just absolutely brilliant execution and timing. Notre Dame looked like they had that play stopped gold. 11 yards on it as Newsom went for the big gain, and Alabama's got a first down 10. Now Alabama is challenging again. Notre Dame in the lead, 21-7, 5-26 to play in the third quarter. Rutledge rolls out to his right. Look at the hit by Jim Browner for a loss. Rutledge never got a chance to pitch back. Jim Browner was coming on a strong safety blitz, and he hit Rutledge right at the 15-yard line, a loss of two. It'll be second and 12. As Rutledge made his pivot and turned around, there was Browner hitting him with a helmet right at the belt buckle and driving into him like a pile driver and bringing him down on the 15-yard line. Savage tackling by Notre Dame with five minutes to go in the third quarter. The Irish lead at 21-7. Alabama coming back, their second big drive of the second half. First drive blunted by an interception by Luther Bradley. Now let's see what Rutledge does on second and 12 from the 15 of Notre Dame. He's rolling out his Rutledge to his right. He's looking. The big rush. He gets it away and throws it out of bounds. He threw it away, but there's no intentional grounding. He had to get rid of the ball. Heimkreider coming on a linebacker blitz. And Ross Browner coming like a steamboat. Was ready to wrap, and they did just as he released the ball. He threw it away in wisely. It'll be third and 12. The key to that one was the quickness of Heimkreider coming on that blitz. It was a delayed blitz, and once he got a full head of steam, he gave Rutledge too much pressure, and Rutledge just did not have a chance to set himself and get the ball to the receiver. So with 4.40 to go, third down, 11. Big call for Bear Bryant and his very poised football team. White shirted Alabama out of the huddle. And they've gone to a new quarterback. Jack O'Rear is in. Rutledge goes out. Jeff Rutledge goes out. O'Rear is rolling out. He's going to be hit for a loss. Look at Browner get him back at the 22. What a 
play by Browner and Ken Dyke. They just blew open the Alabama offensive line. And so, instead of third and 12, it'll now be fourth and about 18 to go for the first down. Actually, fourth and 20 as Notre Dame makes the big, big defensive play. And very unfortunate for Alabama, O'Rear ran into his guard, Lewis Green, just as he was turning to stop and make uh, set his feet as he was going to pass. And that almost knocked him off his feet. It broke up the timing on the play. Jagrina, of course... Uh, did not mean to do it, but he hit Lucky it. Berry with a field goal attempt. Hits high into the air and into the stands. Does he have it? He does. A 38-yard field goal attempt by Bucky Berry. It is up. It is good. And with 4.05 to play in the third quarter, the score is 21 to 10 in favor of Notre Dame as Alabama has scored on a field goal. Hope you're enjoying this game on the Mutual Radio Network, Notre Dame against Alabama, on WOKE in Charleston, South Carolina, WICK, Scranton, Pennsylvania, KHAS in Hastings, Nebraska. Lazy Boy Chair Company is going to award a famous Lazy Boy Chair to the respective schools and the names of today's outstanding offensive and defensive players. The judges, Cooper Rollo, Chicago Tribune, Mike McKenzie, Tuscaloosa News, and Joe Doyle of the South Bend Tribune, the winners will be announced before the conclusion of the game. Score, 21 to 10. Alabama getting ready to kick off. Notre Dame getting ready to receive. We still have ourselves quite a football game, Don Cricky. We do indeed. It's 4.05 to go in the third quarter. Alabama capitalizing on an interception. Notre Dame has turned the ball over twice. Once it led to a lack of a score as Notre Dame was going in, but lost the ball in the Alabama end zone for a touchback. That time the interception of Slager was turned into a three-point field goal, 21 to 10. Now Barry is ready to kick off. He's going to angle his kick away from Hunter. He is kicking it to Terry Urich. Urich takes the ball at the goal line. The cordon of blockers forms in front of him. Straight ahead across the 10. Urich is out to the 18-yard line. A fine tackle by Alabama's Donnie Faust. As Urich went flying out to the 19-yard line, he was hit about the 16. 3.58 to go in the third quarter of play. And what is very important in this third quarter is that Alabama, poised team that they are, have come out and launched two long drives. Important for Notre Dame's defense is the fact that they've shut off Alabama on these two drives with only three points. The inter one-handed interception by Bradley was the big play in the second half so far for Notre Dame. Now, here is a handoff to Al Hunter, turns the corner on the right side. Good defense by Alabama. Hunter looking for blockers, and all of a sudden, Phil Allman, the left cornerback, shot through, made the hard hit. And an Alabama player is up and limping. It's Allman, but he's going to go out now. He's got an ankle problem. There's a gain of three yards on the play. It'll be second and seven. And a key on that play for Alabama defensively was the play of Krause, who broke up the interference. As a matter of fact, when Hunter went over where the interference was, Krause was there, and he made the original hit on the running back of Notre Dame. It is second down and seven now. Here is Slager, handing off up the middle of Vegas Ferguson. Alabama really hit now. Vegas Ferguson got a couple of yards, and that was all. Alabama's defense playing inspired football now, putting the hard hits on. It'll be third down and five. The Crimson Tide is coming on defensively, and they're starting to read where Notre Dame is, is going, and they're reacting very quickly to uh, where Notre Dame is putting its ball carriers. The score is 21 to 10 in favor of the Irish. We've got three minutes to go in the third quarter. Third down and five for Notre Dame at the Irish 25-yard line. Slager hands off to Vegas Ferguson. He's not going to get there. Vegas Ferguson is knocked down at the 28. And Notre Dame will have to punt. There is 2.43 to play in the third quarter. A very quick third quarter. Notre Dame leading 21-10. And Rustic, the Notre Dame punter, will be hitting the ball with a very gusting wind at his back. Well, here Alabama will take the ball again. They've been able to move the ball in the second half against Notre Dame. However, they've only been able to cash in for three points, but they have gained momentum. That is the important thing in football. They have the tempo and the momentum of the game on their side as they have stopped Notre Dame's offense. But Notre Dame has the lead 21-10. Here is Rustic hitting a high spiral. Ozzie Newsom is downfield. He's going to run it back from his 33. He gets the ball, and he is hit immediately by Howard Meyer. Howard Meyer, who's played great special teams football, a sophomore from San Jose, California. After a 39-yard punt, stops Ozzie Newsom for no gain. Now let's take a look at the Crimson Tide and find out how they are going to line up. It looks like we're going to have Rutledge at quarterback for the Crimson Tide as they huddle. Nathan is going to be in at one half back, and I think he is going to be teamed with Culliver and also Davis. Nathan, of course, a an outstanding high school athlete in the state of Alabama, one of the most sought-after high school athletes in the country about three years ago. 
Now we have a timeout on the field now with the score, Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 10. Say, Harry, I hear your old has just started college. What's he majoring in? Spending money. Come on, baby. Expected expenses, and when it does, come on into household finance. We'll do everything we can to lend you the extra money you need. HFC, an equal opportunity lender. now Notre Dame Stadium. Don Crickey, Pat Sheridan, Buck Jersey, Bob Presley, our entire mutual broadcasting system crew. Notre Dame leading 21-10. Here's Rutledge to throw, puts it up. A man is open. A great pass play is a first down for Vanna at the Notre Dame 38. Rutledge was hit and very hard just as he released the ball, but he did get it away, and Ozzie Newsom, his ace on the flank, caught the ball, was hit immediately by Jim Browner, but it is now it's going to be just short of a first down now. They're ruling by inches, so it'll be second. And less than a foot to go for a first down for Alabama at the Tides 46. Don Rutledge was very lucky to get that ball away on a timing pattern to Newsom, who made a little turnout. But Alabama gained more yardage, and they've got a second and one. Second down, a very, very short way to go for Alabama as Rutledge goes with a long count. Here is the snap. Handoff goes to his fullback, Davis, and Davis is right up the middle for maybe what he needed and a little more. He did not get any more than a yard, but he only needed about six inches. And so it's a first down for Alabama. The tide moves on as the clock wears down in the third quarter. 1.26 to play in the third quarter. After being tied in the first quarter, the fighting Illini giving Michigan a big battle. The Wolverines have come on and lead in the second quarter, 21-7. Michigan 21, Illinois 7. And Missouri leads Oklahoma in the second quarter, 7-3. Tad Flanagan goes in the right flank for Alabama. On the left flank is Ozzie Newsom, the quarterback. As his team set down now with an open receiver formation, they're going to go to the run. They hand off right up the middle to Davis, the fullback on first down. He hits ahead to the 45. Got a couple of yards, and that was all. Ken Dyke and Mike Calhoun were on the stop for Notre Dame. Again, Bear Bryant's team is trying to get the big block from K.J. Lazenby on the left side of the line. They seem to have a tendency to go toward his work. Uh, there was one time down near the goal line where about three straight times they went over Lazenby. Alabama breaks the huddle. Second down, a long seven for the tie. Just short of their 45-yard line, Notre Dame 21, Alabama 10. Here is a handoff on a draw. Running up the middle and getting good yardage is Rick Watson, who came in the game at fullback. He has a first down for the tide. Down to the 45-yard line of Notre Dame. As the third quarter clock now shows 33 seconds to play. And it was Jim Bunch, a freshman, on the right side of the Alabama line that laid the big block. It isn't often that a freshman gets in to start on the in the Alabama lineup, but he did the job for Alabama as the white-shirted Crimson Tide breaks the huddle. Lazenby and Bunch are the tackles. Lewis Green and David Garrison check are the guards. Terry Jones is down on the ball at center. First and ten. Rutledge drops. He's looking. The big rush is coming. He gets it away. A man is out there and makes the reception. And then the tackle on Tad Spencer is made by Luther Bradley at the Notre Dame 30. Right now we have a timeout with the score. Notre Dame 21, Alabama 10. Now this for Enco Wiper Blades. Now, world driving champion Jackie Stewart talks about smart driving for Anco wiper blades. My worst accident was at the Belgian Grand Prix. It started to rain and I spun off into a wall at 150 miles an hour. I've got a lot of respect for the rain. I wouldn't drive my family car 50 yards in the rain without good wipers. Neither should you. So get new Anco wiper blades at least once a year. It's just smart driving. Two out of three cars on the road need new wiper blades. Get new Anco wiper blades now, before it rains. While we away for a moment, the third quarter clock wound down. The gun sounded. Now that is the end of the first third quarter with the score. Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 10. The latest and a continuing series of solid cars, deals, and service is now at your Chicagoland Solid Men of Olds, 1977 Cutlass, Omega, 88, and Starfire, and the all-new Olds 98, a luxury car built for today. 
Your solid Venables proudly invite you to get behind the wheel and take a test drive. Experience for yourself just how solid a car can really feel. Today at your Chicagoland Solid Venables. Karstan carpets from Office Equipment Company of Chicago only look expensive. Karstan-powered loom rugs have a handcrafted look and feel, while durable enough for commercial use. Office Equipment Company can deliver the Karstan carpet of your choice at your earliest convenience. Savings and service at Chicago's complete department store for office furnishings. Office Equipment Company of Chicago, downtown at 223 West Lake Street. Free parking right next door. Alabama is starting to come back in the statistical department. The Crimson Tide now have 15 first downs to Notre Dame's 19. They've rushed for 150 yards to Notre Dame's 196. They've passed for 120 yards to Notre Dame's 214. Total yardage, Notre Dame 410. Alabama 270 after three quarters. Notre Dame has tried to pass 21 times, and Rick Slinker has completed 13 of those passes. Alabama, which had tried only two passes at the conclusion of the first half has now thrown a total of 10 times and completed eight of those tosses for 120 yards. One Alabama pass intercepted, one Notre Dame pass intercepted. Notre Dame has lost one fumble, yards penalized. Notre Dame 15 and Alabama five yards penalized. So we're going to start the fourth quarter. Very important fourth quarter and a very important football game with Notre Dame leading at 21 to 10. First down, 10 yards to go for Alabama. Alabama had two big drives into Notre Dame territory in the third quarter. They took the opening kickoff of the third quarter, marched right into Notre Dame territory, looked like they were heading for a score. A pass intended for Newsom was intercepted on a one-handed grab on the goal line by Bradley. That ended that drive. And then Alabama, once they got possession of the ball again, marched right down the field again, and this time they had to settle for a field goal, making it 21-10, to 10, and that's where we stand right now. The Crimson Tide have the ball on the 30-yard line on the far hash mark. Of course, what Coach Dan Devine and his staff want to do now is have their offense get the ball and have the offensive line, which was, been, was dominated in the third quarter, have them get back to where they played in the first half and have them control the ball and the clock. Opening play of the fourth quarter now. Alabama has the ball. Rutledge is at quarterback. It is first and ten at the Notre Dame 30. Here is Rutledge rolling out the big rush. He gets it away as he's hit. Touchdown, Alabama. Coming over the middle and getting the ball is Ozzie Newsom. So Alabama hits the big gator. Newsom was wide open. The Notre Dame safeties weren't in the play. And the tide goes 68 yards in six plays. And it's now very much a game. It is 21-16 with the extra point coming up. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. WGN Radio, Chicago. Alabama needs two touchdowns or needed two touchdowns to go ahead in this game. They just got one on the big pass play. Rutledge was really hammered just as he released the ball, but it was right on target. Running over the middle on a post pattern and catching the ball at the five and walking in unmolested. Ozzie Newsom, now they're going to go for a two-point conversion. Here is the fake. Rutledge rolls. He pitches back. Running with the ball is Newsom. They get the two-point conversion. It is a 21-18 game. So now a field goal would put Alabama in a tie. There's a lot of time left. 14.55 to play. Notre Dame needs its offense with the score. Notre Dame 21, Alabama 18. There's a timeout of the field, and this is for Lazy Boy Chairs. Hi, fans. This is Jim Backer. Do you enjoy Notre Dame game? Did you get excited, too? Do you want to relax after the game? Okay, now here's the winner. Everyone could have a Lazy Boy reclining chair. Right. Go visit your authorized Lazy Boy dealer soon. We've got ourselves some football game. 14.55 to go in the fourth quarter. Alabama ready to kick off to Notre Dame. What the Irish have to do is move that ball with the offense and keep it away from Alabama. The Alabama, Alabama offense came alive in the third quarter, and they've added. They've got 18 points on the boards now. Added 11 in the 
since the beginning of the second half. Now the kick to Notre Dame. Lucky Barry will kick the ball off. Alabama's outscored Notre Dame 11 0 here in the third quarter. The Irish have but three points in their last four games in the second half. They've got to get the offense. Here is Barry into the ball. He's going to hit it very deep. Yurick steps into the end zone. He'll bring it out. Across the 5, across the 10, gets the block. Across the 15, across the 20, he's in open field. To the 30, cuts back. To the 40, and to the 41-yard line goes Terry Yurick on a great return from two yards deep in the end zone. The kicker, Bucky Berry, made the tackle. Yurick might have gone the distance, but Notre Dame now gets the good field position as the offense comes out. This is one of those games a couple of moments ago was the Alabama players standing together congratulating themselves. And now the Notre Dame Special League team football players get together, clap each other on the back as the Irish offensive team comes out of the huddle. It's 37 degrees. Notre Dame on a sunshiny day and the autumn chill is moving into the wind here in the fourth quarter. Here is a fake, a handoff to Al Hunter, running straight ahead. He cuts back, gets across the 45. And Al Hunter gains five yards for Notre Dame. As the Irish go right back to that basic offense, Hunter coming back on a misdirection play. And then angling back across the grain. To get ahead for five yards, it'll be second down and five. Harris was on the stop for the Crimson Tide. Notre Dame with a desire to control the ball and the clock. Big block there by Huffman on the right side. Bernie Hughes laying a block. Notre Dame leads 21 to 18. Alabama's outscored Notre Dame 11 nothing here in the second half. A straight ahead carry on second down is good for only a couple of yards. Bob Baumhauer was right there to make the hit on Vegas Ferguson. So the ball is advanced out to the Notre Dame 47. A big, big third down play coming up now. Third and three for the Fighting Irish. Coach Dan Devine and his team not sending a substitution onto the field with a play, so it's going to be called by Rick Slager, the quarterback, as Notre Dame breaks the huddle. Kelleher is to the left. On the wing to the right is Doman. Lone setback is Ferguson. Hunter comes in motion. Slager's looking to throw. Puts the ball up. McAfee has it for a first down. He's down to the 38-yard line of Alabama. Slager called the big play, and he delivered big. The great fake to Hunter froze the linebackers, and then Slager took two steps back to the 45-yard line of Notre Dame. Cocked his arm and rifled a line drive to McAfee. He caught the ball at the 41-yard line of Alabama and dove ahead to the 38, a 14-yard game. So Notre Dame gets the big, big play on third down. The drive is alive. The Fighting Irish are moving the football now with a three-point lead. It's 21-18, Notre Dame over Alabama in the fourth quarter. Hand off to Hunter. Comes inside the big defensive play by Alabama as Hunter is hit head on and driven back. That was Barry Krause who's playing a great game for the Tide. It'll be second and ten, Pat. Krause had a key interception and made a couple of key plays in the third quarter that kept the Alabama defense inspired against the Notre Dame offense. It's going to be second down and ten yards to go for Notre Dame as the Irish break the huddle. 13 minutes to play in the game. The clock is running. Notre Dame with second and 10 coming up. Slager looks over the Alabama set on defense. He has wide receivers to either side. Here's the snap. He drops. He throws in the flat. It is caught. Keller has the ball. He dives down to the 32-yard line. It was a gain of about six yards on the play, and that'll bring up another big third down play for Notre Dame. Safety blitz on that play that Notre Dame picked up, but they could have been in danger. Slager with the quick off pattern. Uh, the safety man didn't have a chance to get into the Notre Dame backfield because the pass was released so quickly. So we have a third down four coming up for Notre Dame and another big third down play for the Irish. Webkenberg, Moore, Huffman, Hughes, and McDaniels across the offensive front for Notre Dame on third and four from the Alabama 33-yard line. Slager with a long count. He fakes. He's dropping to throw. The rush is on. They're going to knock him down for a loss. He didn't get there. Baumhauer shot the gap and got Rick Slager. He was looking for the pass. And so Notre Dame is stopped on third down. They lose yardage. It'll be fourth and eight, the first sack of the game. And let's see what Notre Dame does now. Here comes the punting unit. It was a spread out play as Slager went out to his left, but Baumhauer was untouched. A big move at the line of scrimmage got him by the blocker, and he boomed into the backfield, grabbed Slager by the helmet, and dropped him. So Notre Dame is going into a punting situation with fourth down, eight yards to go, hoping that they can put the ball out of bounds and put Alabama deep into its own territory. Joe Rustic standing at the 50-yard line. Ozzie Newsom is back for Alabama. Rustic will be angling for the sideline. A good snap. Here's the moves into the ball. Hits it very high. It's going to carry down inside the 10. Oh, what a punt. He got it out of bounds. What are they going to rule it? We'll have to see where they rule it out of bounds. It's going to be out of bounds at the 8. Now there's a timeout with a score. Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 18. What makes Harlem's old style unique among beers? What gives it that great, light flavor? 
Well, first, there's the sparkling, pure spring water. And Old Style is one American premium beer that is still fully poisoned. It's the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. Old Style, pure brewed in God's country. G. Heilemann Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, we have a timeout call on the field, 11.52 to play in the game. Notre Dame's Joe Rustic has just punted. The angle to punt out of bounds at the Alabama 8-yard line, and there the tide takes over, trailing Notre Dame 21-18. to 18. The, the Alabama boys' Crimson Tide, Bear Bryant's very fine football team, is 92 yards away from Pater, 92 yards away from going ahead in this football game. They have been able to move the ball against Notre Dame in the second half. Alabama, on the ground, has moved it for 150 yards. Or rather, yes, they've gone for 150 yards on the ground. And 150 yards through the air for 300 total yards around the huddle now in the wishbone. With the ball for Alabama is Rutledge, the quarterback. He is dropping the throw. He's looking long, puts it out. And Flanagan is out there and is incomplete at the 33-yard line. So Rutledge goes into the well for the pass on first down. The biggest down in football, and that sets Alabama with a second and 10 at their eight. Their options are limited here. Yes, they are. However, the Alabama team has not been afraid to put that ball in the air. And as long as you have a receiver that's as dangerous as Newsom, you've got to watch out. Rutledge, throughout most of the second half, has thrown 8 of 11 for 126 yards. He only threw only twice in the first half. Flanagan was running an out pattern incomplete at the Alabama 30. Now to second and 10. Here is Rutledge rolling out. He's looking. He cocks his arm. He throws. It's long downfield. Notre Dame has it beautifully covered on the play with Bergmeier. Notre Dame's bench is protesting that there was offensive interference, but no call. Bruce Bolton came in the game as a split end. He was way off the play. It looked like he made a move to knock Bergmeier off, who had a play on the ball. And the Alabama fans in the far corner of the south end zone are also booing. They thought their man was interfered with, so they could have a debate down in the field. And by the way, uh, if you were in South Bend yesterday... There's nothing but roll, tide, roll that you could hear on the streets around South Bend. The town has been jammed with about 5,000 people coming in rooting for Alabama. The Crimson Tide is well represented here. Now Notre Dame puts more speed on the right corner as Dave Waymer, a freshman, comes in. He is nose-to-nose with Kevin, who's on the flank. Here's the big rush. Rutledge gets it away from his end zone. Almost intercepted by Waymer at the 29. Ross Browner knocked Rutledge down in the end zone. He put the ball up to save, being hit for a safety. Notre Dame almost intercepts with a defense hold. It's fourth and ten now for Alabama. And listen to the Notre Dame crowd. How important a good pass rush is. There was a demonstration of it. Fine passer. Jeff Rutledge just didn't have a chance to find any pass receiver at all because the blue jersey Notre Dame fighting Irish were all over him. Rod Nelson will come from the end zone. It's partially deflected. The ball is high in the air. It'll bounce down inside the 30-yard line. It takes a hop for Notre Dame. It is down at the Alabama 26. The ball was partially deflected. It might have been Luther Bradley. Luther Bradley got a piece of the ball. The result on is only 18 yards. We talk about field position. Now Notre Dame has it. A golden opportunity in the fourth quarter to put something on the board. With the score... It's 21 to 18. Notre Dame is huddling on the 40 yard line. With a score 21 to 18, there's a timeout on the field. Now, this for GMC Trucks. I love Jelly Rolls and Fishing Hoes and Fridays that are paydays. I love laying down and stretching out and soaking up the sun's rays. I love telling lies and be kind of and getting things for free. But mostly, I love trucking in my GMC. Trucks aren't just tall cars, you know. No siree. Trucks are magic. Trucks can make you hoot and holler and grin from ear to ear. So if you haven't tried trucking, well, there's only one thing to do. Try the 77 GMC at your GMC dealers. When my name is red and it's time to go and heaven calls to me, I'll leave behind the things I love and the angel I will be. But before I go, they'll have to know one condition must be met. Notre Dame goes to the run. Al Hunter right up the middle.
middle, crosses the 25-yard line of Alabama. He is down to the 24. Charlie Hanna and Bob Baumhauer, the two tackles made the stop. It'll be second and eight for Notre Dame. Baumhauer came up with a big play just a few moments ago against Notre Dame. Now we're in a situation where Notre Dame just has to cash in against Alabama. They've gotten the ball now on the 24. Kelleher's wide to the right. Here's Slager handing off straight up the middle. Vegas Ferguson runs with the ball. And he is knocked down by Danny Collins as he gets it straight ahead down close to the 22-yard line. Notre Dame looking to use the clock and move the football. 10.45 to play in the game. The score is Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 18. Notre Dame has now run with the ball 44 times for 200 yards. Ferguson has 20 carries for 107 yards in his first start. He comes out now. Another freshman goes in for the Irish, Willard Browner. He's the lone setback. Wing back to the left is Hunter. It is third down, a long six for Notre Dame. Here is Slager dropping to throw. Here comes the rush. He's got to get away. He's going to run with the ball. Slager's inside the 20, and he's down. He fumbles the ball, and Alabama might have it. Alabama recovers. Slager running with the ball, fumbles it. Notre Dame turns it over for a third time. Colenzo Hubbard made the recovery, and Alabama has it back with a load of time. 10-14 to play. It looked like Murray Lake put a savage hit on him on that play, and the ball just bounced out. Just went rolling toward the sideline. It flew like a forward pass, and Alabama gets possession. The Crimson Tide, of course, came alive. The Alabama defensive players became electric. They jumped in the air, waving their arms in the air. Alabama might be inspired now. They have been in the second half. Let's see what they come up with. The Notre Dame defense came up with a big series the last time. Now it is first and 10 Alabama. Here is Rutledge rolling out. He's keeping it himself, and he's knocked down right at the 20. He got two and was hit hard by Rustic, the free safety, who came up to force the run inside. Rutledge did not toss back, took it himself. The Alabama quarterbacks have run well today. That time Notre Dame shuts it down. They'll give him a three yard gain. Alabama's passed well as well in the second half going for over 126 yards. Alabama has to go 80 yards to pay dirt in the lead in this game. What a football game. Second and seven for Alabama. Fourth quarter. Notre Dame leads by three. Ball just across the Bama 20. Rutledge rolls out. Pitches back. Notre Dame has a defense but Kevin breaks away and gets across the 20 and out to the 22 and that's all. Jim Browner got him. Notre Dame had Rutledge hemmed in, then the pitch back to Cavan. He got wide, got ahead for a short gain, two more yards. It'll be third and six. Ross Browner had him by the ankles back on the 15-yard line. He kicked the dirt after the back got away from him. Browner got up because he knew he had him, but he just squirmed away. A determined run by the Alabama player. Give him credit. And you know, you know that pretty soon Alabama's going to try to burn Notre Dame deep as they did earlier when they scored the touchdown here in the second half. It is 21-18 Alabama. Here's Rutledge dropping to throw. Here comes the rush. Pitch ahead. And Alabama might have the first down. It's going to be very close. Notre Dame made the hit on Pete Cavan at about the 28-yard line. It's going to be close enough to measure. That was a third down play. And now there's a timeout with the score. Notre Dame 21 and Alabama 18. Now you can drill one-half-inch holes with your three-eighths-inch power drill when you buy the True Test 15-piece twist drill bit set. Two of the bits are over three-eighths of an inch in diameter, up to one-half an inch. Yet their shanks fit your present three-eighths-inch power drill, so you can drill one-half-inch holes without buying a new expensive one-half-inch drill. The True Test 15-piece twist drill bit set with metal case and flip-up index is just $16.50 at participating True Value hardware stores. Is held. Alabama will be forced to punt. Notre Dame sends back in receiving position back on his own 40-yard line. Bertmeyer, he'll be standing on the 40, midway between the two hash marks. Rod Nelson punts the ball, gets it away end over end. Bertmeyer signals for and makes a fair catch for Notre Dame at the Fighting Irish 43-yard line. And so now, with 9.15 to play in the game, the Notre Dame offense in blue and gold trots back out onto the field. They have not scored any more than a field goal, a total of three points in their last four games in the second half. They moved the ball almost at will against Alabama earlier in the first half, and now Notre Dame will go on offense first and ten. But an extremely poised Alabama team has come back and given Notre Dame a great football game in the second half. And now we have a new quarterback for Notre Dame as we have a timeout on the field, and this for Buick Automobiles. It is a magic moment. You are at your Buick dealers, about to drive home in your brand new Buick LeSaver. It's lean and trim, classic lines. It looks quite unlike any full-size Buick you can remember. You get in. A heady new car smell surrounds you. Your LeSaver feels the way it looks, tight, 
You turn the wheel a little. No wasted motion in this car. Big brushed metallic gauges look back at you. That V6 engine is doing great. You rub your hand on the seat. Six people could be really comfortable in here. You swing into your driveway. Your wife, the kids, the dog, everyone but the parakeet descends on the car and gets in. Off you go to nowhere in particular. Life and your new saber are great. Maybe the dog shouldn't sit on the seats. a quarterback for Notre Dame. He's from Belleville, Illinois, and a very good runner, has a good arm, too. But he's coming into a tight football game cold here in the fourth quarter. He hands off running with the ball as Vegas Ferguson. He drives out from the Notre Dame 43 off right tackle. He crosses the 45. Charlie Hanna knocked him down. There was a pickup of close to four yards on the play. Now they'll spot the ball where it's a three-yard gain. It'll be second down and seven. Those two Alabama tackles, Baumhauer and Hanna, have been getting great penetration in the second half. Third quarter score, Michigan 35, Illinois 7, Maryland 14, and Clemson nothing. First quarter, Nebraska and Iowa State nothing, nothing. Chris Haynes is wide to the right now for Notre Dame. Wide to the left is Doman. He's a wing back there. Rusty Lish going with a long count. He looks. He fakes. He hands off to Ferguson. He darts up the middle and is knocked down to the 48. Way short of the midfield stripe. He had to get down to the 47-yard line of Alabama for the first down. It'll bring up a third down and five. Bob Howard met him head on. And Ferguson off the bottom of the pile. Now a big, big call for Notre Dame. We have eight minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the game. The clock is running. In from the sidelines with the play for the Fighting Irish is wide receiver Dan Kelleher. He looks at Lish, gives him the play, a six foot four inch sophomore from Belleville, Illinois. Called on Slager, was shaken up when he fumbled the last time. And Lish has come on to quarterback Notre Dame now. The Irish holding to a three point lead, 21 18. Third and five for the Irish. Here is Lish, rolling out. He looks, he's going to run with the ball. He has the first down and plenty more down the sideline. He's inside the 35 and out of bounds to the 32. Hit hard there. Rusty Lish delivers in the clutch. 20 yard gain. Got some more scores. First quarter, Auburn and Georgia's Bulldogs. Nothing, nothing at the end of the first quarter. Halftime, Kentucky 14, Florida 3. Halftime, Army 16 and Colgate 6. So Rusty Lish delivered, going around the right side and moving down to the 23-yard line. Belted out of bounds by a savage elbow hit. He's okay. Notre Dame comes out of the huddle. They're trying to take advantage of the second opportunity with field position. Now it's first and ten at the Alabama 32-yard line. Slager was shaken up. He had great statistics. We'll give them to you in a moment if they go to Ferguson on the run. He's inside the 30 to the 28. While he was in through three and a half quarters, Slager threw 23 passes. He completed 15 for 235 yards and one touchdown. He was intercepted once. He had to leave the game after he was hit with a savage tackle and fumble. And now Lish comes in, Notre Dame holding to a three-point lead. Mutual, the world's number one radio sports network, brings you Sunday afternoon NFL football. Join Tony Roberts and Tom Pagna for Miami and Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Dan Kelleher goes wide to the left now for Notre Dame. It is second down and eight. Hunter moves out as a wing to the left. Irish moving left to right here in the fourth quarter. Hunter comes in motion. He gets the hand up. He falls and goes down at the 30. Lost his footing. Nobody touched him, and Hunter slams the ball to the turf in disgust. He lost his footing. Nothing he could do about it, but it brings up a long yardage situation for Notre Dame. Third and almost 10. When you look at Al Hunter as a runner, his most outstanding characteristic, besides the great speed that he has, is his ability to cut back behind interference, and that's what he was trying to do. And this is one of the few times this afternoon that he had trouble doing it, just stumbled, and after he stumbled down on about the 31-yard line, he slammed the ball in disgust into the ground. Gary Wetkenberg was shaken up, and now a freshman Tim Foley's in to replace him at left tackle. It is third and ten for Notre Dame. Lish calls signals, drops back from the Alabama 33, throws in the flat. It is to incomplete, try to go to Doman. It was too low and incomplete on the far flank of the 25. It would not have been enough for the first down. And so Rustic comes in to punt the ball again with 6.24 to play. And this is the second time here in the fourth quarter that Notre Dame has had field position advantage against Alabama, but has been unable to come up with the points on the board. They still only have a three-point margin against the Crimson Tide, who throughout this entire game, no matter how much they've been behind, have been able to maintain their poise. It will be a try for field goal. Dave Reeve will try a 48-yard field goal into a gusting win. The snap and set down are good. Reeve hits the ball. It's not going to get there. There's not enough on it. 
It's a touchback, and Alabama will come out first and 10 at their 20, trailing Notre Dame 21 to 18, with just 6.17 left to play in the game. 6.17 left to play in the game, Alabama 80 yards away from the Notre Dame goal. They are three points behind. Touchdown gives them the lead. Field goal gives them a tie. Alabama huddles on the 10-yard line. Mutual for the fifth year, Mutual brings you Monday Night Football with Lindsey Nelson and Tony Roberts. Over most of these Mutual stations, you will be able to hear Buffalo and Dallas. Dallas with Roger Staubach. Dallas having a tremendous year. Great passing team in that shotgun formation. That should be a terrific ball game on Monday night on Mutual. But right now, you're hearing a game that has been seesaw all the way through. Notre Dame coming out of the first quarter and dominating Alabama. Then taking a 14 to nothing lead. Alabama fighting back in the third quarter. And that brings us to where we are now. 21 to 18 in favor of Notre Dame over Alabama. The Notre Dame offensive line and actually football games are one in the line. That's where you got a scrap. The Notre Dame line dominated in the first half. Alabama came back and their offensive and defensive lines have had the edge in the second half. Alabama breaks the huddle. Flanagan goes wide to the left. Wide to the right for Alabama is Pete Kevin. Here is Rutledge dropping. He throws in the flat. The ball is complete. The Flanagan crosses the 25, crosses the 30, and then Goldick wraps him at the 33. But he has a first down, and the clock continues to run. We have six minutes and nine seconds left to play in the game. Alabama has advanced the ball out now to its 34-yard line with Notre Dame in the lead, 21-18. to 18. That was an interesting pass pattern. Flanagan just ran a couple of yards beyond the line of scrimmage. But as he caught the ball, he had somebody in front of him to provide him with blocking as he moved downfield. Cavan again goes wide to the right. It is first and ten for Alabama. Rutledge, the throwing quarterback, is in. He rolls out. Here's the big rush from Heimfighter. Rutledge gets it away. It is incomplete at the 50-yard line right in front of the Alabama bench. He was trying to go to Cavan, who was running the fly pattern on the far side. Luther Bradley was right with him. Rutledge did well to get the ball away at all as Heimkreider came on the weak side linebacker blitz. Heimkreider was there, and so was Browner. Browner was there. Uh, moving behind Rutledge. You could feel, feel Browner breathing behind him, and there was Heimkreider within view, and Rutledge had to get rid of the ball. That's the best way to stop a passing attack. Get all over the quarterback, swarm all over him, and that's just what Notre Dame did on the last play. Second down and ten for Bear Bryant's tide. Newsom goes wide to the right, one-on-one -on -one with Luther Bradley. It is second down and ten for Alabama. Here is Rutledge making. He hands off. They go to the run, and running with the ball is Tony Nathan. He breaks loose. He crosses the 45 and is run out of bounds to the Notre Dame 48 yard line. Tony Nathan was hit, apparently stopped, and he broke free and got across midfield and was finally knocked out of bounds after an 18-yard game, so Alabama drives on. Prior to the game, Dan Devine said that's one of the things we have to avoid. Runners being hit at the line of scrimmage and breaking away. Tony Nathan, who gained 2,500 yards in his last two years of high school, one of the most sought-after players out of high school in the United States. An outstanding player showed why so many colleges wanted him to play for them. The pressure is on the Notre Dame defense now. It has done the big job in the second half as the Irish offense has not put up points in the last two quarters. Here is the fake. Rutledge is dropping. Browner's coming. Rutledge throws long. Out there is Newsom. Good coverage. Newsom has the ball at the 10-yard line. And he's knocked down at the 8. It is a first and goal for Alabama. Perfect coverage on Newsom, but he went up between two defenders. A 40-yard pass play. And now Alabama, with 5-10 to play in the game, will have it first and goal inside the Notre Dame 9-yard line. If indeed Alabama comes on in this game, you have to think as players of the game, Jeff Rutledge or Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie Newsom has been devastating as a pass receiver against Notre Dame in the second half. He has caught six for 127 yards against Notre Dame, and most of that in the second half. The score, 21 to 18 in favor of Notre Dame over Alabama. And uh, Jeff Rutledge, when he gets time, is an extremely accurate passer. Two Notre Dame defenders on that play. One of them, Bergmeyer. We pause briefly for station identification for this. This is Mutual, your news and sports radio network. This is WGN Radio, Chicago. First down for Alabama. First and goal. The ball on the nine-yard line for the Crimson Tide as they come back with a big bomb. Rutledge to Ozzie Newsom. 
against Notre Dame. Plenty of time left for the Crimson Tide. And as a matter of fact, if the Tide does manage to score, plenty of time left for Notre Dame. The Notre Dame fans have to remember the two times the Fighting Irish in the second half got field position and failed to cash in. 4.57 to go now in the fourth quarter with Notre Dame leading it 21-18. to 18. Notre Dame defense is going to try to hold now. Alabama was 80 yards away from the goal moments ago. They are now nine yards away from the goal. Bear Bryant's team, no matter how hard they were pressed, has come back with poise. They've always kept their poise and never been rattled at receiving. Newsom has caught six for 127. McAfee, six for 190, for rather, for 92 yards. Rutledge now has his Alabama team. At the 20-yard line of Notre Dame, they break the huddle and come out to the line of scrimmage, which is the 9-yard line. Flanagan is wide to the right. It's all on the Notre Dame defense now. Now, Rutledge, with the Notre Dame student body, up and cheering right before him off to the side, cannot call signals, and he'll be granted another huddle. So it's an official timeout. Does not charge against Alabama. Stops the clock with 4.57 left to play in the game. Willie Fry of Notre Dame, one of the co-captains. A Dean's List student in pre-med. Waves his hand to the Notre Dame student body to keep it down. Now, the Irish deploy their defense. Alabama, white and crimson, comes out on offense. First and goal, Notre Dame nine. Fourth quarter, Irish lead by three. A fake, a handoff, the run by Nathan. He is down to about the seven-yard line, maybe the six. He tried the left tackle. Off the bottom of the pile is Bergmeyer, the strong safety. Jim Brown was also on the stop. It will now be second and goal from the seventh. You know, Don, when you look at it, we've seen two different football games. First half was all Notre Dame, and the second half really has been all Alabama. Just two separate football games here this afternoon. Every week, Notre Dame has not been able to score in the second half. That's been their problem this season. Right now, they have the lead, but Bama is challenging. Second and goal for the seven. Rutledge is rolling out. He looks. He's going to trigger into the end zone. It's intercepted by Jim Browder. Yes, Jim Browder intercepts for Notre Dame. For a second time, the Irish intercept in the end zone. The Notre Dame student body, part of it, pours out onto the field to salute Jim Browder as the Alabama drive is stopped and Notre Dame takes over the football with a three-point lead. And Cavan was open all alone in the far corner. The quarterback, Rutledge, had all the time in the world on that play. No rush, but he threw it right into Jim Browner's arm. And, Don, I'm going to ask you to remember a very, very important game against Navy when a very, very hot Navy quarterback gave Notre Dame all kinds of trouble. Well, that's what Rutledge has been doing now. As we look at Rutledge's number here in the second half of the entire game, Rutledge has now put the ball in the air 19 times. He has completed 12 for 208 yards. Of course, the long gainer, the 39-yard touchdown pass play. But Notre Dame with a three-point lead has the ball back, and they'll have to run the clock now. They need the first down so badly. They'll be running the ball. George Connor, one of the Notre Dame greats looking on. He'll be with us next week for Notre Dame-Miami as Pat Sheridan goes out for Notre Dame for USC-UCLA. Don Cricky with Pat Sheridan here from South Bend on a mutual broadcasting system. The ball's going to be set at the 15-yard line. We have a delay of game call against Notre Dame. So they'll start out first and 10 from their 15-yard line. The Irish have it all, moving left to right. Rusty Lish, a sophomore, is the quarterback, and the heat is on Notre Dame now as Alabama's defense is all charged up. Here's a handoff to Hutter. He's knocked down for a loss. Alabama charges through and gets Al Hutter, but the clock runs. Four minutes and eight seconds to go. Gus White, the middle guard, knocked him down for no gain. And I know what Diane Devine is thinking right now. He wants his offensive line to clear the way now. He wants to control the ball and the clock now for these next few minutes against Alabama. Move particularly from his own 15-yard uh, line up to about the 40 and then have Restick want to have Alabama pinned way back in their own end. I think that's precisely what he wants. Of course, they'd like to keep the drive right down the field. They could never give up the ball again because Alabama's been moving it in the second half. Notre Dame leading 21-18. Here's the snap to list. He's going to throw. Timing pattern in the flat. The ball was almost intercepted. It was picked up on the one hop by Phil Allman. So Lish gambled through in the flat. If Allman had intercepted the ball, Bama would have had it first and 10 at the Notre Dame 20. Well, you recall the intercepted by Jim Browner. Jim Browner also did that down at South Carolina in Columbia, South Carolina, where an interception at the end of the game won it for Notre Dame. So this is the second big interception that Jim Browner has come up with for the Fighting Irish. 
336, that stopped the clock. Alabama's got some confusion on defense, and they have to call a timeout. No, they're not calling a timeout now. Look like they have too many men on the field. Lash is rolling out. He's going to run across the 20. He's across the 25, across the 30, and out to the 35-yard line. Rusty Lash runs ahead for a first down. A 20-yard gain on the play and a first down by sophomore Rusty Lash. The clock runs, and Notre Dame maintains possession. Very, very important run by Rusty Lish from Belleville, Illinois. Uh, Lish has rushed for 41 yards on only two carries. Wow, what an average. And now Notre Dame breaks the huddle. Lish in place of Slager, by the way. In case you missed it, Slager was hurt on the 15-yard line running for Notre Dame. Huffman down over the ball, is turning the ball just across the Notre Dame 35-yard line. Hand up to Vegas Ferguson, the Alabama defense viciously attacks the ball, looking for the football. But Vegas Ferguson, the freshman from Richmond, Indiana, cannot be separated from it. And so, with a gain of two yards, it'll be second down and eight. But time's such a critical factor now, and at the moment, it's working against Alabama and for Notre Dame as the Irish lead by three, and 2.50 remains in the game. But still plenty of time should Notre Dame's drive stop for Alabama to get the ball back because they have the long passing game. We have seen that. They've struck long. They hit on a 39-yard scoring pass here in the second half. Second and eight for Notre Dame. Lish takes the handoff. And Alabama makes the hit on the ball carrier as soon as he gets the handoff. And right away, the, and there's a Notre Dame player down. The hit was made on Vegas Ferguson. He is down. Also down on the play for Notre Dame is Ernie Hughes, the right guard. So we have an official timeout on the field, Pat. Well, they, Notre Dame can't afford to lose Ernie Hughes because he is the he's the tower of strength in Notre Dame's offensive line. Great pulling guard. He is down on the field and be looked at now. Lazy Boy winners on offense. Ken McAfee, who caught six passes for 92 yards on defense. Ross Browner. So uh, chairs go to their schools, uh, to Notre Dame, by the way, in the names of those players. Scores at the end of the third quarter. Pittsburgh leads West Virginia 17-10. to That game surprisingly close. In the fourth quarter, Maryland 20 and Clemson nothing. In the third quarter, Kentucky leads Florida 21-9. Kansas State in the first quarter leads Oklahoma State 7-3. And Ohio State's Buckeyes of the half lead Minnesota 9-3. The Golden Gophers giving Woody Hayes a busy afternoon. Notre Dame now huddling on the 25-yard line. The score is 21 to 18 in favor of the Irish. 2:26 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Time is out for the moment. Notre Dame gaining possession of the ball on an interception by Jim Browner in the end zone. Rutledge had all the time in the world after a long Alabama drive. Uh, that was the key play in that drive was a long pass to Ozzie Newsom. But the key in that particular last play was the fact that he did not find Cabin in the far corner of the end zone. Cabin was all alone. Instead, he threw for his end, who is down near where Browner was, and Browner picked off the ball. Now it is third down and ten for Notre Dame at the 32-yard line of the Irish. Here is a handoff to Hunter. He turns to the outside, turns the corner. Hunter gets out across the 40, but did not get the first down. And with 2.19 left to play in the game, Notre Dame will have to punt the ball back to Alabama. And here comes Rustic and the Notre Dame punting team. Ernie Hughes, who was shaken up a bit ago, was helped from the field. It looked unlikely that he'll return. He's being attended to on the Notre Dame bench. He apparently banged up his right leg. Alabama will get the ball back, trailing Notre Dame 21-18 to in the fourth quarter. And the clock showing two minutes and 19 seconds left to play. Restick will be kicking into a wind. He is looking down at Ozzie Newsom, the lone safety for Alabama, and the Tide will have the block on, the block rush coming up. Here is the snap from Meyer. It's a perfect snap. Restick hits the ball, hits it high. Newsom is forced into a fair catch at his 22, and there Alabama goes on offense first and 10. Here's a, here's a look at the, what Alabama has done in the second half of play. Notre Dame dominated the statistics at halftime. Alabama has come on now to have 168 yards via the air and 174 yards on the ground, and the total is 382. So Alabama has moved the ball so well in the second half against Notre Dame. Part of that is due, though, to the fact that Notre Dame's offense has been unable to control the ball. First half, they moved it. Second half, Alabama's defense controlled the Notre Dame offense. Now it's first and ten for Bama. Rutledge looks. He's rolling out. Here comes the rush. He gets it away just as he's hit. He completes the pass, and then the interfit complete as Rustic makes a drive. 
diving hit on the fullback, Johnny Davis. Davis had the ball, rest the camera to him. He lost the ball. It's incomplete. It will be second down and 10 for Alabama at the Tide's 22-yard line. And Ken Dyke just waffled Rutledge in the backfield on about the 10-yard line. Rutledge was lucky to get the ball away. Ken Dyke came roaring in and gave a monstrous hit to the quarterback of Alabama just as he let the ball go. He didn't have his, even have his legs set, and I'm surprised he got the ball as far as his receiver in the first place. Rutledge is amazing that he stays in the game after taking hit after hit just as he releases the ball. It is second and ten for Bama. Rutledge is rolling out. He stops. He looks. Here comes Donner. He's hit again. A free football. Now they're rolling an incomplete pass. It's loose in the Alabama end zone. The official blows the play dead. Blues Cascade down. They thought it was a fumble. But Rutledge got his arm forward. It was Browner who hit him again. A great play by Ross Browner. And that will bring up third down and ten for Alabama at the tie 22. There were three Notre Dame defensive linemen converging at the same point. Almost at the same time, Browder got there first, and right behind were Willie Fry and Ken Dyke, all three of them. And eventually all three rammed right into the quarterback of Alabama as the ball went squirting into the end zone. 21-18, Tabor and Notre Dame, 202 to go, third down 10. What a play, big play for Alabama. This is the biggest play of the game right now for Alabama at this point. It's Three-point deficit for the Tide. Here is Rutledge rolling the pass. He's looking long. He fires in the flat. The ball is caught for a first down at the Notre Dame 42. Newsom running a down pattern, turned out, and caught the ball diving at the Bama 42. And so, with 1.56 to play in the game, Alabama gets the first down and keeps its drive alive. And the way they move that ball so far in this football game, I wouldn't take anything away from Alabama right now. They've got one minute and 53 seconds to go some 58 yards into the Notre Dame end zone. That Notre Dame, that Alabama offense has moved the ball in the second half. And here they come. It is first and 10 now for the Crimson Tide. Rutledge looks, he throws hard. It's incomplete. He triggered the ball over the middle, down to the 42-yard line of Notre Dame. Tad Flanagan was diving for the ball there, but it was too far for him. Bradley was covering on the play. And so it will be. Second down and 10, Alabama. The Tide... Now with very little time left, but with that long passing game, they can hit from the, for the distance or way out. 1.36 left to go. Alabama's huddling back on the 35-yard line. What a football game this has been. 1.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame leading 21-18. Rutledge brings his team out of the huddle. Alabama has wide receivers to either side now. In the game and wide to the left is Rick Neal. Here is Rutledge dropping the throw. He flips the pass out. Catching the ball for Alabama's Pete Cabin. And he is going to be knocked down way short of a first down. He got it on five yards. It'll be third down and five coming up. He took a swing pass to the right flank and tried to elude the Notre Dame tacklers, but Heimquieter took a stand and got him. Now we have another big third down call for Bear Bryant and his staff as Bear Bryant sends in the substitute with a play for his quarterback. It'll be third down, six yards to go. What are they going to come up with? We're going to find out. One minute to go in the game, and the clock is running. Alabama third and five. Rutledge drops. Here comes Fry. Browder gets him. He fumbled the ball, I think. He might have fumbled the ball, but Notre Dame stops him for a loss. No, it's Rutledge who covered his own fumble. But Notre Dame makes the sack. Browder and Fry got him. Fourth down now for Alabama. Fourth and ten at their 42. And they call timeout with 48 seconds to play. The Crimson Tide now wants to stop that clock. What a situation. Pressure on Notre Dame's defense. Pressure on Alabama. More pressure on the Alabama team, of course. The ball on the 43-yard line. They have to go 57 yards to put it in the end zone. Rutledge has been oh so hot here in the second half. He had two completions and two attempts in the first half. And Alabama has roared for yardage in the second half as Notre Dame has been unable to control the clock and the ball because Alabama's defense has come on strong. The Crimson Tide has put it together offensively and defensively in the second half, just like Notre Dame did in the first half. Right now, Alabama's game is on the line on this play. It is fourth down for the Crimson Tide. The ball is just across the Tide's 42-yard line. 
fourth and ten on the clock shows 48 seconds to play. There have been many great football games played in this packed stadium, Notre Dame Stadium. One of the great hallmarks of college football. Never a better one than this. The drama of this game has been extraordinary. Not that long ago, Alabama was down first and goal at the Notre Dame nine, trailing by three. And Notre Dame came up with a big interception. Jim Browner got it. Alabama has fought back to get possession. Now, 48 seconds. Here's Bama out of the huddle. Rutledge is dropping the throw. Here comes Browner. He throws the ball. Newsom loses the ball. Body pies that out of the field. And the final score is Notre Dame 21, 